These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons How the fuck's that even happened? The two grown men on a mission now So buckle up and just strap in I'm a bitch, I'm a lover, I'm a child I'm a mother, I'm a sinner, I'm a saint I do not feel ashamed These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons It's America's Barley Basket Welcome everyone to another episode of America's Barley Basket. I'm your host Marlon Wells, alongside host Nathan Fulsabach. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Marlon. How are ya? I am just getting by. Yeah, I could try to think of something more exciting. You to doing say, all right? You know what? You struggling? Yeah, I mean it's it is you know to. Steal an overused sports phrase. It is what it is. You know? mm-hmm. I have one and a half good beverages around me. I wish I had three. <laughs> missing the all important protein shake. Got to get them gains. Oh yeah, you got to get them. I know them how you gains. are. I know how you are about your your gaining. <laughs> You're always so well beveraged. Yeah, you know I pride myself in that. Yeah, I, I always like to have a comprehensive collection of fluids around me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just sitting here with a water, like some chump. Yeah. yeah, you know, I try not to judge you, but it's hard. You, know, oh, you make it well, tough. I appreciate you putting in yeah. the effort anyway. <laughs> I mean, get I was some kind getting... of chocolate milk delivery service or something. Pick up your game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I don't know. Not to start with hot takes. I don't know if it's hot or not. Uh, I don't. I'm not the biggest oh, chocolate milk guy. I knew you're going that angle, man. Really, you're really starting this off on the wrong foot, man. <laughs> like God it's, damn it's it. good, but it's never ever anything I seek out. I never think to myself, "Fuck, I could really go for a chocolate milk." Oh man, chocolate milk is so fucking good, bro. You know what else? You gotta is get so the fucking Swiss good? Miss. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, the Swiss Miss. I remember from my youth of of yeah. being really good. But you know what else is really good, bro? Fucking milk. Oh, no. I mean, milk is acceptable, but chocolate milk, you are like, were you one of those psychopaths as a kid that when you have the choice between chocolate milk and regular milk, chose regular milk? Like in the in the lunchroom, like the cafeteria in my youth, uh, if there was chocolate milk, I would take one of each. Oh, man. I mean, that's a more acceptable answer than saying <laughs> just taking regular milk the that's, whole time. That's the thing. I'm not anti-chocolate milk. I just, I just never. You're more of a pro-milk guy. Yes. Pro, I'm a pro. I support the dairy industry all, just, all the time. I'm just trying to paint this in a way that I can morally accept it so we don't have to end the podcast. Because <laughs> I am. <laughs> chocolate milk is like seventh on the list of things that I love the most. And that's not just food. That's like family. That's like, I mean, everything on this planet that I love. <laughs> chocolate milk still pulling a seven. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like whenever I do have it, I'm like, okay, this is good. I'm not, I don't take a sip and then throw it on the ground like, oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> but I'm also never just like, fuck, this is the best shit ever. Oh, yeah. Whereas I, if I pour myself a nice tall glass of red cap milk, I I take that down and I'm like, oh, fuck, yes. This is, I am reborn. I've never once drank milk that couldn't be improved with chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good combo. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's no, it's popular for a reason. I get it. Yeah. I just never, <laughs> I just never seek it out. And for me, it used to be a go-to for hangovers. Oh, really? Yeah. The cold dairy, man, just the cold dairy pushing down the poison. I mean, it's <laughs> poison that will eventually <laughs> erupt from my body violently from one of two ends, but... <laughs> But for a brief hour or so, it would give me a respite with the vicious hangovers that I was dealing with on a weekly basis. <laughs> my uh, my hangover remedy was always uh, Alka-Seltzer, V8, and uh, Pedialyte. Ooh, all in the same drink? Oh, God, no. No, 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 no. Not like, not in a blender or anything. 
but just like get a get a couple of uh, of Alka Seltzer in some water, and that'll clear the fog up a little. The you need the fucking vitamins right away from the uh, from the V eight, and that like the majority of hangover comes from dehydration. So you get mm-hmm. Pedialyte's in you now, like as soon yeah. as you can. When I was a younger man, I used to force myself. I'd have a I had a big glass in the bathroom, like a. I don't know, like an eighteen ounce glass. I would make myself drink two of those before bed. No matter, uh-huh. I mean, viciously drunk, barely <laughs> can stand. Would like, literally, would yell at myself in the mirror. You fucking drink two of these, and, I would make, and it would make all the difference in the world. Oh yeah, man, two like two big glasses of water and a couple ibuprofen before bed when you've been drinking. That's you know, get in front of it for sure. Yep. Fucking Pedialyte. That was apparently an old uh, an old Pantera touring trick. They would apparently ask for Pedialyte on their rider. Oh, interesting. Yeah, just cases of it. Because, I mean, like, if you're in Pantera, you're dealing with hangovers. There's no way yeah. around it. And yeah, then they're drinking Jack Daniels, too. That fucking slop. Whoa, okay, yeah. hang on. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't I can't have middling thoughts about chocolate milk, but you're allowed <laughs> to just open that fucking sewer yeah. of yours and spill shit <laughs> all over the good name of oh, Tennessee's man. finest. I will take the sloppiest rail Canadian whiskey over Jack Daniels. Oh, I my just God. can't get well, into it, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. This has <laughs> yes. been America's Barley Basket. <laughs> Jesus. You had a good run. Really? Like, just you some know, I, black I, that's, velvet that, that's garbage? A little, yep. I, oh, I'd way rather have black velvet than oh, Jack Daniels. Fuck. And I'm saying, like, you know, I will still, I will drink, I will drink piping hot Jack Daniels out of a fucking coffee mug before <laughs> I would ever drink the finest tequila. Oh, so my it's God. still whiskey. So it's still way ahead of <laughs> well, all Well, I want to thank liquors. everyone for coming. This has been, like, man, I've, yeah. I've. I've only recently come around on tequila as we've we've talked about on the show before yeah. but man I I don't know that I can tolerate this Jack Daniels I've, hate I've always found it just overrated like it's I've never thought it's worth the price. It's like, I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather just have a big jug of sh- slop Canadian whiskey. <laughs> just like, I get nothing out of it. Like, but I mean, I will happily drink Jack and Cokes until I'm making very poor decisions mm-hmm. for getting huge chunks of time. But to me, it's like, I'd, I could easily just be drinking Black Velvet. It's like, bang for your buck wise. Because huh. the idea of like enjoying Jack Daniels straight on the rocks, like fuck that. That's a bridge like, too far for me. Yeah. I can do that with like, I can do that with like a gentleman Jack or a single barrel Jack. Um, but I I don't think there's any whiskey that I'll enjoy just a, a couple fingers of over some rocks. Oh, see, I can, I, you know, I, I ruined a good chunk of my thirties doing that with, with, uh, <laughs> With Jameson. (laughs) I have a buddy who that's the signal that he's had too much to drink and we need to get him home is the first time he (laughs) orders a a JMO neat. Like, because he'll drink JMO gingers, JMO cokes all night long. But it's like, as soon as, as soon as he orders one on its own, it's like, we need to get him a fucking Uber like right now because that's the curtains (laughs) starting to close. You're just cutting out the middle man. Hey, you know, (laughs) but I didn't get the ginger. There's more room in this glass for more whiskey. (laughs) Yeah. If you hear Brady lean over the bar and go, I'll take a JMO neat. Doesn't matter that he's coherent right now. Like this. (laughs) The credits are rolling on Brady's consciousness. We need to get this show on the road. That's good. Oh, and the trouble is, too, that like around here, the pores are so heavy. So you're going drink for drink with someone that's just (laughs) casually drinking Bud Lights. You drink a quart of whiskey. (laughs) They're just mildly buzzed. and like (laughs) You're starting to fight with a rubber machine in the men's room. (laughs) It's 4.30. It's after work drink. (laughs) Is he fucking crying? (laughs) He's crying again. (laughs) I just love you guys. (laughs) The sun is still out. Have some (laughs) self-respect. Oh, 
I, I love the idea of you squared up with a condom machine in the bathroom. Yeah. Just like, Rough sure. Rider, you think you're better than me? <laughs> you think you're tough, huh? <laughs> you got your horny goat weed? You think you're better than me? <laughs> Just throw a wild haymaker and immediately dislocate my wrist. <laughs> Don't even notice it. Because <laughs> you're, they go out hit you because you're banana flavored, huh? Is that it? <laughs> That motherfucker has an extra elbow, or either that or he has a compound <laughs> fracture, but he doesn't even seem to notice. Why should we? <laughs> oh, God. It's just flopping. <laughs> Wrist yeah. flopping around. Looks like I'm drinking left handed. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend that was kicked out of a street dance because his kneecap wasn't facing the right way anymore. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, the street you, dance. Holy shit. Yeah. I've not heard oh. those two words together in a long time. Street dance yeah. was uh, the thing. For our uh, European friends and perhaps maybe some of our coastal friends, a street dance is when during the two and a half months of the year where it's not a frozen hellscape, uh, the local bar in the tiny small town will have a street dancer. Basically, you're just doing what you did inside the bar, outside the yep. bar. <laughs> and they'll hire a band or fucking Daryl's Racing Pigs or something <laughs> something to spice it up a little bit. Yeah, for us, I think it was always a band and they played like someone would park a flatbed trailer across Main yep. Street for them to play on. And, uh, Man, and be... you just, yeah, you just party. And different street, different cities had better street dances than others. Uh-huh. Like some, fucking shout out to Willow City, North Dakota, man. They came correct. They called it Western Days because I think they had a rodeo at the same time, and it would get crunk. Holy shit! <laughs> just vomit everywhere. <laughs> it was just a disaster. I mean, a beautiful disaster. Like relationships forming and breaking up in front of your eyes yeah it's like a time lapse of how a relationship <laughs> should go yep. the back so, home the uh the i think the the bell of the ball for street dance celebrations back home was uh almont north dakota spelled like almond but with a t and population no one and they uh they it was like a labor day weekend like three or four day ordeal where there's like a a trail ride where people ride horses for several days from one town to to elmont and then some manner of fucking everyone's fire and blanks old west bank robbery shootout reenactment thing and and then a street dance yeah just some real cowboy shit that was uh that was always one of the premier events of the year. Oh, I like that. I, I kind of like the sounds of that already. Yeah, this is a good time. I they remember still got being a bar in, in that town? Mm, I'm going to say probably. I haven't been there for probably 20 fucking years at this point, but I'm going to say with almost certainty, yes, because no small town is ever so bad off that they get rid of the bar. <laughs> they'll, they'll get rid of the post office before they get rid of yeah. the bar back home. So... <laughs> Well, it sounds I, like we need to do comedy in that town once. I agree. Once we get rid of the poison, yeah. Once the poison like the, that fills everyone's lungs. The vaccines went out today, man. Like we're Ooh, we're good in the mail, waiting by the mailbox <laughs> for my medicine. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, is it shot time today yet, mom? <laughs> Just sending sending hypodermic needles full of COVID vaccine through the mail. <laughs> don't they have to be at like negative 70 degrees Fahrenheit something like that yeah, yeah. This, oh mine's broken it's just a wet broken syringe so should I just drink it I'm gonna drink it <laughs> it's better than nothing right yeah. <laughs> I can feel the COVID coursing through my veins will Mr. Gates still know if I just drink it yeah. <laughs> Fucking conspiracy dickheads. Oh, these fucking dildos, man. Nobody <laughs> gives a shit about you. Uh, and first yeah. off, you're on a fucking cell phone. They don't need to put a <laughs> micro trip in you, bro. They yep. know everything you're fucking doing. And they're bored shitless by it because you're a fucking dud. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Greg, who sells car insurance, doesn't need to be tracked for anything. Yeah. I'm sorry, Greg. Yeah. Sit down. Uh, maybe once by accident they actually paid attention to your day-to-day and they were fucking bored to tears and sad for your spouse 
That's all that came. Like, oh my god, that lady regrets marrying that dude. That's oh, all they're man. thinking, man. Oh man, she's got to sleep next to that pillow, man. Oh, imagine Ugh. what how hot he is to lay next to. Oh fuck. god, like cuddling a with weird... a fresh ham. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah. Nobody gives a shit about you because you suck. No one's f- <laughs> fucking fighting to put a goddamn microchip in you. You fuck. We that war was already lost when you couldn't stop playing fucking Candy Crush. You goddamn fucking <laughs> dope. Oh, I hate people. Also, Jason, we all know what you're doing because you won't shut the fuck up about it on Facebook. Yep. You oh, douche. No shit. You're ugly for you and your fucking wife and ugly fucking kids. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> fucking all of you just a big fucking giant suburban full of shitty dopey people. <laughs> Quit voting. <laughs> oh. I hate uh, all of you. North Except our Dakota. dear listeners. I love you. Yes. I if, love our dear listeners. Well, that's the thing. I don't think anyone who listens to this show is that type of person, even yeah. here in North Dakota, where most yeah. of our download numbers come <laughs> from. I don't think uh I don't think they're those people. Oh, I don't Christ, get it. I hope not. God, yeah. Just get a fucking clue. Fucking oh, just like how did people my age become elderly where they just believe any fucking dumb shit they see on Facebook? Yeah, I man, don't get it. Oh my fucking god! Like, I'm I'm fucking dumb, man. <laughs> Can I even say? <laughs> Jesus Christ! If it wasn't for art classes, I'd have a negative GPA in high school. <laughs> Oh, my fucking it's, God. It's fucking Facebook, man. They just believe anything they read, and now, yeah. the, now the country's on fire. Yeah, fucking A. Yeah, Facebook. Facebook is the worst and ruined everything, and now I encourage yeah. everyone to find our newly minted Facebook page on Facebook. <laughs> um, if you go ahead and type America's Barley Basket into the, uh, into the search bar, you will find an official... America's Barley Basket Podcast Facebook page. Man. And on the subject of dum dums, I am enjoying the fucking amazing de evolution of Donald Trump and his wrecking crew basically turning into the fucking bad guys from Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> like, it is insane how funny this is getting. Like, yeah. It's basically Trump is Boss Hog and fucking Giuliani <laughs> and the rest of that fucking goon squad is the fucking dipshit, dim witted deputies. And yeah. they just can't get out of their own fucking way. And it's so insane. Like, it's so great. Yeah. It's, uh, it's real fun to watch from afar. Yeah. I have God, a... how much fun must this be for other countries? <laughs> I mean, besides the, the fact that they have to suffer from our consequences because we uh, right. decided we are the world's policemen. But... Yeah. How, how much fun is it if you just view it at a surface level and don't think of the yeah. ramifications? Oh, my God. It's such a great show. It's got like, to being... feel like watching the high school bully, big, dumb, popular jock like trip and fall down the stairs and his pants came off and is and turns out his dick through a little like that has to be what it feels like yeah and it just keeps happening he just keeps fucking tripping and it gets more ridiculous (laughs) then his buddies try to help him up and they all trip and it just never fucking at one point someone shit their shits their pants someone shit their pants well fuck it turns out giuliani does shit his (laughs) pants that's fucking amazing oh that video was really something yeah his fucking Oh, my God. He applies his fucking hair fucking goop with a goddamn <laughs> highlighter, apparently, because it leaks all over him. Uh, <laughs> this is crazy. Are, it's so, yeah. Things are pretty good here in the final season <laughs> of America. Yeah. The thrilling yeah. last We're, episodes. Yeah. This is like the last season of Scrubs with none of the funny people <laughs> left. <laughs> <laughs> as as a huge Scrubs fan, calling something the last season of Scrubs is the best insult that you can give to anyone. Oh man, you know, I don't. What do, you, do we think they just part America out like a fucking 
old car. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who wants Georgia? No, not just Atlanta. You got to take it all. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can't give Yellowstone away. It's pretty beautiful. We got to get something for Yellowstone. <laughs> Rest of Wyoming, oh, we'll just sell that for fucking scrap metal. But <laughs> I'll g- I can't let this go. I'll give you Yellowstone, but you have to take Idaho. Yes, I know there's a lot of white supremacists there, but you have to. <laughs> that's well, that's part of the deal. Yeah. You want Yellowstone, you want, huh? You want the splendor, you got to have the racism. That's part yeah. of it. It's a combo deal. <laughs> If you, in order for me to give you the geyser, I got to give you the Heil Hitler too. Like <laughs> yep. those are can't have one without the other. <laughs> uh, now I'm just pissed because if you want the geyser, you got to take the Kaiser. Was right there, and that joke <laughs> went right fucking past me. Damn it, Marlon! I'm you know rusty, else? Nathan. I'm rusty at comedy because we can't do it. <laughs> you know what else has comedy in it? What's that? The Simpsons. Oh, yeah, it does. We're only 25 minutes into fiddle fucking around. <laughs> into our Simpsons podcast. Yeah, we've talked about small town street dances and Rudy Giuliani's <laughs> shit accidents. Oh, my God. So great. <laughs> what? What? Is, oh, my God. Could you imagine? Like, it's just none of it. It's so glorious how it happens. Like. It's just in Kajin being so fucking dumb that this is the guy that's representing <laughs> you on national television. And you're like, yep, he should keep doing that. Hell he's, yeah. He's doing yeah. a paying up job. Yeah. I don't understand it. Oh, man. He's just, it's the everyone involved is so fucking dumb. That's what's amazing. It's almost like uplifting that you can be that fucking dumb and become president of the United States. I have not gotten to the uplifting part of that yet. Yeah, I'm still I in mean, the depression era of that. Ah, see, I'm, I'm kind of past it now. I'm a fucking glass <laughs> half full guy. You're, you're <laughs> coming back up out of the, out of yeah. that bell curve dip yep, that you were man, in. He is legit a dumb dumb and he's fucking president. Like an 80 million people fucking love him. Holy shit. Imagine if someone that isn't fucking, I mean, that's probably what's scarier is because well, that's what's going to happen. We're going to get another Trump who's not, who can fucking dress himself. Uh-huh. And then the men will fucking, <laughs> that's when the robots will fucking take over because we actually get a fucking, a non inept fascist in charge. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the scary part is now you've exposed that uh, yep. a solid 55% of America is dumb yep. as a fucking Cause, post. So, yeah. Cause the next and one, Biden's won't. just going to settle us in for a four year fucking nap and nothing's going to change. <laughs> so the same people that are angry now are going to be angrier yeah. four years from now. Everything's I just want to go place. to the dentist. I just want to go to the dentist. Yeah, I just want to be able to go to the doctor when I... I don't want to, like... I, I'm tired of saying, if that pain doesn't go away within the next few days, I'll go have someone look at it. Yep, yep. Oh, my God. I bet that's just so baffling for people in other countries. Uh-huh. <laughs> I got to wait to get my tax return in before I can get my appendix out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for our, for, for our, like, Belgian and German listeners, I'm sure it's just befuddling to be like, hang on, what? Why don't you just go to the doctor when you need to? Because this is America. That's not how that works here. Yeah. Who do you think my parents are? We don't have doctor money. <laughs> right. We, we don't have health money. Mm-hmm. Why, why don't I go to the doctor when I need to? Because I haven't had a chance to save up for six to ten months. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because someone has to pay for our 97 army bases across Asia. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we need more more bombers and less yeah. doctors. Yeah. Everything's USA. going pretty well. Yeah, we should have a tiny little flag to wave right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just, when I'm editing this, I'll just put in, like, Jimi Hendrix's national anthem yep. guitar solo <laughs> in the background. There we go. I like the sounds of that. I also like the sounds of us discussing The Simpsons. Hell yeah, I do. We do it for several hours a week. We do it. We're doing it. We're trying to. It's hard. There's so many hot takes just floating in the air above our heads. It's hard not to grab them and yeah. run with them. It's easy to get, uh, it's easy to get sidetracked, but 
I maintain that's part of the appeal. A charm, yeah. And our deep, sultry voices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, our... Uh, it's, a ki- it's a killer combo. Our sheer, uh, our sheer audio sex is yeah. uh, <laughs> what I'm going with. That's what the t-shirts yeah. are going to say someday. <laughs> We're going to kill it on the cameo scene. <laughs> giving <laughs> sultry birthday greetings to our middle-aged oh, male boy. friends. <laughs> Don't do like Brett Favre did and shout out some fucking Proud Boys neo-Nazi shit. That's, oh, did he? That, Ooh, was, I can that see. was like a year ago. Yeah, the <laughs> it's important if you're a celebrity on Cameo to research the things that you're shouting yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do just a quick Google search. It's really all you got to do. Yeah, just be like, are these Nazis? Oh. Oh, these are Nazis. Oh, dang it. Not again. That's the other t-shirt. It just says, oh, those are Nazis. (laughs) On the subject. Well, not really on the subject. (laughs) Not even fucking close. (laughs) Let's get to the beloved animated (laughs) sitcom, The Simpsons. Let's do it. We're in uh, season seven. Episode four? You got it. We're doing it. It's titled Bart Sells His Soul. So starts off in church and uh, uh, Bart is handing out the theme or the hymn, the hymn, the list of hymns. And Bart, ever the prankster, has added in in a God of Vida into the uh, playlist mm-hmm. for that for that Sunday's church service. And Which- so the organist starts kicking out the intro. And as we all know, that song is fucking endless. So <laughs> we get to see the Simpsons barrel through 18 minutes of Inagata Vida. And also, it got me thinking. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I want to hear. Oh. You're driving this boat. Okay. What the fuck is an Iron Butterfly live show like? <laughs> <laughs> so is it, do you just mill around and wait? Do they play it at the end or do they got to play it right away to keep get you to fucking get invested? But then what happens if everyone just leaves? Because <laughs> that's what they're fucking there that's for. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be the last song, right? If you're, yeah. if I bet Quiet Riot plays Come On, Feel the Noise at the end, you know? Yeah. I've seen Georgia Satellites live, and they are also a band that only has one song anyone's yep. fucking heard of. The key, I think, is to start playing some covers that people give a shit about. Like, have you got to you got to swallow your pride a little bit. You fucking that's in the satellites, dude. Hey, I was there for the whole fucking show. I was also nineteen and blackout drunk, so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a lot of other options. Yeah, they they got to play "Keep Your Hands to Yourself" at the end, correct? Yeah. You know, they might have played it twice. <laughs> if I remember her calls. I was probably browning out pretty hard. But <laughs> I had a buddy saw uh, Stan Bush in concert once, and he for sure played the touch twice. <laughs> I, I almost respect that. Yeah. A, you have accepted yeah. who you are. You are moving on that you're not going to have another hit no one wants to hear anything off your fucking new albums because they fucking suck yeah and they're they're and just, just here for this like no one at georgia satellites was there to hear any other georgia satellite song yeah it's like ah, i wonder what they're working on now no one said that their fucking family doesn't say <laughs> that <laughs> <laughs> their loved ones don't want to hear their new material. No, they just want to hear Keep Your Hands to Your... That's a fucking good song, by the way. <laughs> hey, man, they fucking nailed yeah. it. They wrote one great song. A lot of bands can't say that, so good for them. My uh, my note here on Inagata De Vida is like, to me, this just screamed, oh, yes, this is written by fucking old white boomers because, like, this is... <laughs> so, like, if you wanted... Well, maybe I'm wrong, but I I took the joke being that Inagata De Vida is like this quote unquote like evil song, right? Or at least was was viewed at the time that way because uh, it's like about the Manson murders or something, right? Isn't that what that song's about? Oh, I had no clue. Like I I wasn't sure if the joke is this song is way too long or if this is a you know quote unquote evil song. Because this is what an evil song would be to a fucking boomer writing this show. Yeah. See, I went with, I thought it was the length, but you could be on to something there. And also, I think they sing it like a lot of way people think the lyrics are, where they say, in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, where it's, you're right. So, Maybe it is just the joke is that it's so long. 
But my thought was like it cuts. My thought was like, of course, some boomers would put a fucking evil yeah. song in there and have it be this when like portrait of an American family from Marilyn Manson was out by this point. If they wanted to make that yeah. joke. <laughs> no shit. A very good point. <laughs> Holy man. Marilyn Manson was fucking spooky when he first came out. Yeah. That shit appealed to me. <laughs> Holy guacamole. Parents were real scared of that skinny I, white boy. I remember skipping a FFA meeting to go to Minot to buy uh, Smells Like Children, I believe, on CD. It's like, I was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anybody anybody who had that, that album in particular, like Smells Like Children, in their giant CD briefcase, you were always like, oh, <laughs> oh, you got that good, yeah. good. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> That was one of two times in my teenage years my mom had really awkwardly attempted to have a talk to me with me about my music choices. <laughs> and it was very uncomfortable. And a lot of eye contact was avoided. I'm pretty sure I was playing NBA Live 96 when it happened. <laughs> <And> I, just, <laughs> I, I followed what a lot of uh, legal uh, defense attorneys always advise is uh, deny, deny, <laughs> deny. <laughs> just like, uh, it's not mine. Well, it's been here for like six months on your dress. Uh, I just listened to the guitar parts. Well, I don't know. It's like, it's like, you don't have the master tracks. What do you mean I just yeah. listened to the guitar parts? It's not like I had like this really sophisticated hi-fi where I'm adjusting the treble yeah. and the bass. Oh, uh, I had an AWA <laughs> single yeah, you, disc you were player. mixing the vocals out of it. Come on. <laughs> But see, my mother, poor God bless her, she she can never really make it stick because it wasn't a unified front with my dad. Because in my dad's head, anything that wasn't 70s AM radio was just headbanging garbage. <laughs> but <laughs> like harmless. Him, like he him, wasn't mad yeah, about it. Yeah, it's just all noise. It's just like a fucking, like the TV, just white noise <laughs> on the TV was the same as any modern rock music to him. Or like, I remember him one time jumping in the car and he... It was on top 40 radio and it was Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> and he just pawed at the stereo and hollered, get this head banging shit <laughs> off of here. <laughs> Hootie. And you would hire them men sight unseen to watch your infant yeah. child. <laughs> they are gentle, harmless people. Darius Rucker <laughs> has not banged his head once to anything. <laughs> yep. Like I'd, that is not his I, scene. I dare you to throw on time by Hootie and the Blowfish and attempt <laughs> to bang your head. Your body won't let you do it. It just rejects all the signals yeah, you're sending. Just, you stiffen up. <laughs> God. If I throw on time, the last thing I want to do is head bang. I want to sit yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have, you're not looking to get a circle pit going yep. in the Barnes and Noble that you're hearing. <laughs> <in. laughs> yeah, I'm not going to throw bows in this fucking coffee shop. <laughs> but uh, so Bart has switched in. So they're playing in a gut of DeVita and he is really getting a kick out of it. But uh, no bad deed goes unpunished at the Springfield church. So, uh the uh, Reverend Lovejoy, he twists some arms. He's able to c convince Milhouse to rat out on Bart. So they are the boys have to clean the uh, the organ pipes, and they get talking. And Milhouse is like, "I'm sorry, I don't want any. I don't want. I didn't want my soul to be, you know, eternally damned or whatever." And and Bart's like, "There's no such thing as a soul, Milhouse," which is a uh, Pretty fucking metal way to start off an episode yeah. of The Simpsons. <laughs> like, Jesus, man, fucking wow. <laughs> fucking bending that note, I like it. <laughs> As we've covered before, Bart's pretty metal. Yep. He's a real Darius so whole... Rucker, if you will. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> out to destroy the youth of America. <laughs> So Milhouse is like, well, there's such a thing as a soul. And they go back and forth. And like, and Milhouse is like, oh, yeah, if you don't think there's a soul, how about you sell me yours for five bucks? Which Bart happily does. He'll take five bucks for Hell his soul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and that's kind of the, that's the A story. The B story, which I enjoy, is uh, the Hibbert family, Dr. Hibbert's family. Now we don't just see the wife. We see all the yeah. kids. They're, they're looking for a family atmosphere restaurant to eat, and they take a couple wrong turns, and they end up at Moe's fucking bar. <laughs> Thinking it's a family <laughs> it a, bar and grill. 
Yep. Just pull, Mo is like, ah, uh, just pull some chairs up to the <laughs> pool table. <laughs> I, which I thought was funny. I'm not above it. I have eaten sitting on a chair off of a pool table. So. Oh my God. Yeah. I have told so many jokes while using a fucking pool table. It's something to lean against. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Hey, can we turn off the overhead light that hangs above this pool table? <laughs> nope. Okay. Can we turn off any of the lights? Nope. <laughs> no, we're going to turn some more yeah. on. <laughs> How about the TVs? No, those are staying on too. Okay. Uh, no. The women's auxiliary is at that other table organizing a silent auction for <laughs> raise money for the basketball team. Uh, <laughs> they need all the light they we get. Have, <laughs> Terrific. We have told jokes in truly awful places. Oh, yeah. Just never, the scenario is never good. It's just never yeah, good. It's ne- it, there's, always, there's always at least one, like, deal breaker that happens and we end up doing the show anyway. <laughs> Like, oh, <laughs> oh they my wouldn't God, turn yeah. off. Everything was fine, except they wouldn't turn the lights off, or everything was fine, yeah. but we didn't have a microphone. Like, there's always yeah. one thing <laughs> that that yeah. should make us go home, but we don't because yeah. we're soldiers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're something. No all right. limits, baby. <laughs> No, no self respect, more like it. <laughs> Desperately needing this hundred dollars. <laughs> How much should we spend on gas? We don't like to talk about it. <laughs> uh. I do like to when they're, when Dr. Hibbert asks the kids where they want to go, what restaurants they want to go to. The first kid says the Spaghetti Laboratory. <laughs> it's a good name for a restaurant. I'd love, go to that restaurant. I would happily go to the Spaghetti Laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> and. Well, going back to the uh, Millhouse Bart Soul Sale, I miss being an age where having five dollars cash made you feel like you were king of the world. <laughs> Holy shit! How do I remember that feeling of? I remember the feeling of just having paper money made me feel like a fucking yeah, king. Yeah, I feel like I have been in that exact place within the last five years. So I don't, <laughs> I don't miss it that bad. Fucking Hollywood Falsebach, but uh, yeah, because oh, I've man. had it more recently. See, yeah, I've just I've been such a success as an adult. <laughs> I just I, I yearn for the. For yeah. my days coming up in the Not ranks. all of us have the, the rocket on our back taking us into the stratosphere <laughs> that you do. Like For me, the movie Trading Places is like a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> been successful for so long, I just wonder. Uh, you're, you're just yearning to have to scrape by again. I mean, you've seen how I dress. I'm doing yeah, pretty well. Yeah, that is true. I've seen your Schlitz t-shirts. Yes. So. Yeah. Which that neck hole is getting alarmingly big. We might have to retire mm, that Yeah, one. no, it's a plunging neckline. They, it's yeah, starting it's to very... look like that J-Lo dress from 20 years ago yep. that everyone lost their mind about. <laughs> yeah. it, like, it looks like something like a teenage girl would have worn over a shoulder <laughs> with like, like an exposed <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> and then, yeah, with a belt around it, so it's more like a dress. <laughs> uh, I support you rocking that look with that shirt. Don't throw it out. Repurpose it. Recycle, baby. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be more earth, more earth yeah. conscious. You got to right. think local. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do like another good sight gag is that enormous, uh, like navy surplus deep fat deep fat fryer that Mo buys Holy when he decides fuck. to uh, turn his place into a family restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, his exact quote is, I got it used from the Navy base. You can flash fry a buffalo in 40 seconds. Oh, oh shit, that was so funny. And, uh, and what's that the caught name? me really sideways. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Just the look how huge and un- unwieldy it is. <laughs> Comes in on a flatbed. Yeah. <laughs> and what name do they choose? Is it Uncle Moe's Family Feed Bag? Is that what they go with? You got it. Yeah. Oh, man. And it made me think back. The 90s was kind of the rise of the fucking Applebee's TG. Yeah. Because that shit wasn't big in the mid 80s when I was a little, little kid. No, that's a 90s thing with all the silly shit on the walls. Yeah. The like family friendly 
after work yep. the bar can and grill. Still, get yep. a, still has a liquor license so you can get a drink. Yep, but still mm-hmm. safe for the kids. That's totally a 90s fucking phenomenon. That's... That is still around, at yep. least where we live. Oh, there's yeah. what there's what forty seven Applebee's is yep. in this town. I know they're not doing as hot nationwide as they once were, but they're they're an institution that ain't going anywhere. Like, was it, remember like Applebee's, probably like man, eight Oof. years ago when like that uh, woman that writes for the Grand Forks, uh, a mid sized city for North Dakota standards, uh, the restaurant review uh, woman wrote a review of an. Uh, it was an Olive Garden, and like this, it, beca- it went viral because everyone's just laughing at the idea of reviewing an Olive Garden. And it's like, if you didn't grow up in the rural middle of nowhere, you know that doesn't make sense to you. But that totally makes sense to me. Yeah, like, absolutely. Everyone I grew up with, like, you know, and I'm not, and I think it's totally fine. Like, going to to a city that has shit like the Olive Garden is a big fucking deal and it's nice and it's a fucking right. treat and these fucking s- stick up their fucking ass too cool for school <laughs> fucking elitists that's like fuck you dude someone's mom wants to take a three hour drive to get to a town that has fucking stoplights let them enjoy an Olive Garden <laughs> Jesus Christ can, can anyone experience joy unless it's fucking got your stamp of approval oh somebody wants endless breadsticks you can't hate on them for that breadsticks are good (laughs) i won't defend anything else at that restaurant but the breadsticks are good yeah like it's it's a step above an applebee's but i have driven from fargo to minneapolis to eat pf chang's and then turn around and driven back to fargo that's like an eight hour round trip (laughs) <laughs> that's all just to eat at pf chang's i've done that more than once but like anyone in any city or anyone that knows anything about authentic chinese food thinks that's fucking crazy yeah, and i get that's that amazing. but like <laughs> sometimes that's exactly what i wanted and i had to have it and that's the closest one yeah. man I used to know people that would road trip four hours to drive to go to a sonic in sioux falls An eight-hour round trip to eat slightly better Dairy Queen level food. (laughs) Yeah. I'll give, uh, I will occasionally, like, I think driving the 15 minutes it takes me to get to Sonic is a little too, that's a little too far for me most times. It's it's exhausting. (laughs) But on occasion, I will go there if I just have to have a Sonic breakfast burrito because they got one of the best in the game. I've heard that. I, you give me I, a, a Sonic breakfast burrito and a peach sweet tea, and I'm a happy boy. Yeah, get all those nutrients that peach sweet tea has in it. Odds are I'm stopping at Popeye's on the way home, too, just because it's in the same neighborhood, and I don't get over there all that often. So, Just pour it all into the same sack. <laughs> We're just a loose sack. Yeah. Nothing's wrapped, nothing. Yeah. Just, you just hold the sack up to the drive-thru window and have it put the peach, tra- <laughs> peach tea just right into it. it. In. Yep. Don't, don't waste a glass. Don't waste a glass yep. on me. <laughs> no, no sense wasting a box at Popeye's. Just dump the hot chicken into the this plastic bag <laughs> oh <laughs> we need to have life coaches <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah no we're we're doing fine well, things are turning around <laughs> <laughs> and who things are not turning around for are bart simpson because he is really struggling without having a soul there's all sorts of ominous things he's noticing, like the uh, <laughs> the magic eye on the door at the Quickie Mart doesn't even notice him as a living thing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, God, that was funny. The automatic doors at the Quickie Mart won't open, <laughs> and he just walks headlong right into yeah. it. <laughs> his pets are afraid of it or <laughs> mad at him. <laughs> yeah, his pets don't like him. The uh, uh, Jimbo is like blowing fog on the ice cream display case to write messages and bart can't he can't like make fog with his breath on the cooler door (laughs) make fog sounds like how a person that doesn't speak english as their first language would try to describe farting (laughs) the the big one he he made fog too much (laughs) i don't like <laughs> oh boy. 
<laughs> Another thing I do not care for is Milhouse's maniacal laugh in this episode mm-hmm. when, when Bart pleads to get to Jesus. Milhouse is, he's a dark man. <laughs> like, yeah, watching Milhouse be fun. the evil one of the yeah. pair is really fucking funny. <laughs> And, he, and it turns out he doesn't even have the soul anymore. All of a sudden, uh, it is now within the uh, the very greasy hands of the comic book guy. <laughs> Literally greasy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, comic also, book guy yeah. is such an odd character oh, to me. Cause I it's love like, it. Yeah. It, is, it is woefully accurate of a lot of, because I run in fucking nerdy circles, but yep. so like, I I know that dude down to the yeah. voice. I know that dude. Yep. Just the tone, the condescending. Nothing is more you can pick it out than someone who's failing at life that is yet somehow still smarmy and condescending. Like it's like, yeah, just, it's, and, it's so baffling. You almost can't get angered by it. And they have that odd vocabulary where it's like trying to be like hoity toity. And but wearing a fucking t-shirt that's too short. Yep. It's like the fucking. I've I've been watching a pretty solid series on uh, HBO Max called Those Who Can't about this group of teachers, and uh, there's their like hardcore nerd character is very much a like fat, long hair, fedora wearing D and D kid who says things like "milady," like that, like yeah. overly proper. <laughs> way that yeah. they speak like yep yeah, i know that guy too uh-huh there but by the grace of god go i because i you know i got the build to be that guy but <laughs> thankfully <laughs> i had good friends that fucking <laughs> would bust your fucking balls if you acted like a fucking goober like that so That's shout out to my buddies if any of them are listening to this <laughs> thanks <laughs> thanks for keeping the bridle on <laughs> Don't let me don't let me indulge my <laughs> fedora fantasies. <laughs> That's it. Just hit me now. Like if you were to line up all the Simpsons characters we've met, you kind of look most like the comic book guy, but oh, you're nothing absolutely. like the comic book guy, which is yeah. good because yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, if you were to pick the one that looks most like you, oh. it's the comic book guy. Yeah, my like all. I shave my sideburns and just have a goatee. I'm the comic book guy. <laughs> I don't rock the pony much anymore, but I easily could. I still got the long hair, so I could pull it off. If I were like, I, and, and I'm not taking shots at you because if I were to shave my beard, I am Chief Wiggum to a fucking T. <laughs> yeah, grow your hair out a little bit more, maybe. Get, get the curls. Get some of that. Get the get that get that fluffy lettuce growing in. Yep. <laughs> oh man, yeah! Shout out to my friends for <laughs> not letting me. I remember wanting to get into magic when I was like ten, eleven years old. I really oh, had a oh, knack for it. Hold and up. I was like, Ma- "Magic the the Gathering or fucking magic, magic, magic?" Because oh, like, it was like a beat up old book in our library about learning magic tricks. I thought it was so cool, but I was like, "I'm gonna catch so much shit from my <laughs> buddies." <laughs> Which I mean, the downside of that is I never did things that I would enjoy because I didn't want to catch shit for it. Right, but. there's a heavy price to pay for yeah, sure. There's a but. heavy price to the uh, emotional abuse that happened in, in schools in the 90s. Like, you, you were saved from a few pantsings when you were 16, yeah. but like, yeah. you missed out on some in the things theater. too. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I could see you being a fucking stage magician for sure. Oh, with, fuck. I can see you pulling scarves out of your sleeves. Yeah, but you know what? It, it involves a work ethic that I don't have. You really have to fucking put a lot of effort to learn a measly fucking make a pigeon disappear or something. Yeah. I just don't got that in me. I think, Nathan, that you should follow your dreams. I want to, I think that with within two weeks time, I want you to be able to pull a coin from behind someone's ear. That's yeah. like, that's not a complicated trick. I'm not asking you to yeah. saw some lady in half. Just a real quick <laughs> sleight of hand. I think you can do it. You know, if I had that kind of digital dexterity, I'd be better at playing the guitar, which is also something I gave up on way too soon. <laughs> <laughs> 
guitars are hard, man. <laughs> the strings are hard. the strings are so tidy and they're so close <laughs> together, and my fingers yeah. are so chubby. Yeah, I'm just yeah. And I don't want to. Hey, uh, let's not talk down our digital dexterity too much. What's up, ladies? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we are on the market. <laughs> I like how I'm dragging you in on this. Yeah, you are, but yes, yes, we are. I'm just going to roll with it. (laughs) That's the spirit. We just told told them all that we look like the comic book guy in Chief Wiggum, and our main selling point is fingering. Like, what what market are you aiming for? It takes it takes all sorts of different things to make the world go around, man. Someone out there is looking for that. Uh, I guess you're probably <laughs> I mean, right, actually. Yeah. Someone's out there. Someone married Chief Wiggum. <laughs> so, oh, someone God, bore true. Ralphie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ralphie. <laughs> oh, so. Uh, Bart is beginning to lose hope that he can't find his soul, but it turns out Lisa bought it. This is not one of those heartwarming where yeah. Lisa and Bart kind of, I kind of like that. Always makes me happy. I just love that the <laughs> comic book guy bought the soul to begin yeah. with. What was I'm, his plan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't it too that he was in an ex- exchange for elf pods. Yeah, elf pods. <laughs> a great quote. Remember elf? He's back in pog form. <laughs> oh, God. And then, of course, Moe's restaurant doesn't make it because Moe is not meant to be a happy server at a Applebee's ripoff. He's meant to be a surly bartender, only, almost strictly only serving drinks to crippled alcoholics pretty much yeah, he's trying so hard and keeping the facade up for a while though yeah. like i'm almost impressed with how long he keeps this going yeah you know he he sunk his life savings into it we find yeah. out it's very depressed about that i love the uh there's a moment before bart gets his soul back where he tries to get uh ralph's off of him like he's like snarling yeah. and hunched over trying to convince yeah. ralphie to sell him his soul for a dollar yeah. and i love yeah. helpless ralphie noise just the like eh, eh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Everything about Ralphie is so good. <laughs> oh, man, that fucking episode was good, man. I laughed so fucking much. Yeah, me too. It was a real fucking good one. <laughs> but yeah, I like that Mo finally just fucking snaps and everyone leaves the restaurant and he's back to the same old Moe's. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Nothing's changed. They're just sitting in darkness drinking tap. Beer. Yeah. Oh, man. We, we've we been locked up so long, I would love to sit in darkness oh, and drink tap fuck. beer. God, yeah. Have control of the jukebox. Yeah. From my phone. I've been a TouchTunes app guy from, from day one. Oh, no I'm shit. I'm fucking running that shit from the, from the table. Oh, look at you. 21st century digital boy. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> Dot com Marlin. <laughs> is, is that a bad religion song? Twenty first yeah. century digital boy. It is, isn't it? I knew that was some, something. Yeah. My, it was either that or T Rex. <laughs> that that's twentieth century boy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's a fucking good ass song. I like that yeah. song a lot. Yeah, uh, I like I like the bad religion song too. We're just full. Of, we're just yeah. fucking. Top on the charts here. My brain had to do the Rolodex thing of figuring out if 21st Century Digital Boy was, uh, who did I just fucking say it was? I'm not. T-Rex? Yeah, no. The other oh, one. Bad Religion? Bad Religion. Uh, my brain had to run diagnostics to see if it was Bad Religion <laughs> or Rancid because at first glance, my brain thinks that's the same band. <laughs> oh, really? See. And it's not even close. Like, it doesn't yeah. make sense. <laughs> See, Rancid was a big part of my teen years, where, where Bad Religion was only just here or there. Yeah, my I didn't get into Rancid until probably my late 20s. Perhaps the greatest photo of me ever taken I, involves me wearing a Rancid t-shirt. Oh, boy. 
Yeah. Is it your hair loaf one that we were discussing yeah. last week? Uh, it, 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 we're very, I don't know if we're at peak loaf, but we're getting there <laughs> in that picture. It's like my junior or sophomore class picture. My school picture. So, yeah, it's <laughs> it's more the bell than the loaf. My senior <laughs> years, right, I, had, I, I trimmed it down so it's more true loaf where it looks like it could come off in one piece. Perfect. Like a hair helmet. <laughs> <laughs> like Lego well, hair. It, Junior, yep, exactly. Junior year, my hair looks more like a cart, two carpet samples glued together <laughs> and put right on top of my head so it's parted down the middle. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. We need to get a Patreon going, and old pictures of us is going to be oh, one of the reward I levels. Just literally today while looking for a photo on Facebook, I, there's, I saw the one of the two pictures that exist of me with an attempt to have blonde hair. And it is something, man. Oh, it boy. is. It is something. It's, <laughs> yeah. Oof. Delete that shit so we can put it behind a paywall yeah. one of these I days. Think, I think if you own a salon and you do that to a minor, you should, <laughs> you should, you should suffer repercussions for it. <laughs> God, maybe I was 18. I don't know. But it was, yeah. I was not in my right my frame of mind. I love that you think there ought to be a statutory salon crime. Just like, he didn't know any better. He was too young. You knew it. Salon. You took it. I and was you the, exploited this boy. Yes, I was the subject of two very severe salon crimes. Those fucking <laughs> highlights I got. And it's always all of my tragic hair decisions are captured in driver's license pictures, too. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, my God. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're not like tough, young rabble rousers. I'm sure there's plenty of people who have like black eyes in their in their photo IDs. <laughs> you just have bad yeah. hair choices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah because you weren't be a worse. tough yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Episode five of season uh, season seven of The Simpsons is Lisa the Vegetarian. Uh, they take the family to Storytime Village, which is meant for very young children. So the two older ones are not into this. Uh, but Maggie super is into this. And it's all like it's all like bad animatronics, like even even lower than Chuck E. Cheese style animatronics. Uh, they they and it's like ah, it's the story of the three little pigs told through these tinny speakers and shitty animatronics. And the, I love they do the uh, the the wolf blowing the straw house down, and it just <laughs> yeah. like barely moves. There's like a motorized arm that like barely moves the house, and everyone groans except Maggie, who is frantically applauding. <laughs> the little claps were so so cute, adorable. <laughs> I immediately thought of like, oh, that's gonna that's gonna get Nathan's baby fever up big yeah. time. Yeah, you knew I let out a high pitched squeal <laughs> yep. of glee. With yeah, it. I just feel it like a like Yoda feeling the disturbance. I'm just like, oh, Marlin, I want a baby. <laughs> oh, that voice. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're not gonna get into baby hungry. We love, can't get into baby hungry. I, love, I don't. Not only that you use that voice and that's what you said, but that you would be coming to me about it, like, yeah. <laughs> like calling you at middle of the night. <laughs> Because oh, yeah. I watch these in the dark of night, <laughs> like 4 a.m. when <laughs> when healthy normal people are fast asleep. Oh, God. <laughs> Get that fucking <laughs> terrifying phone call some early morning. Yeah. Ooh, Marlon, I need babies. <laughs> Nathan, it is 145. Go to bed. <sighs> How can I sleep without having a baby? Okay, Ooh. okay, gonna go now, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> And then to your shock, you realize you're not on the phone. I'm somehow in your apartment. <laughs> Did you climb the balcony? I'm on the seventh floor. Uh, here I thought it was just my normal sleep paralysis demon in the corner, but instead it's fucking baby You're not crazy the old hag. Nathan Folsenbach, <laughs> whose biological clock is tick, tick, ticking. Oh, man, you ever had sleep paralysis? You know, I don't think so. I, like... 
I feel like if I had, I would definitely know it. So the fact that you I you sure the, the would. Fact, I had the it fact once. That I was I'm nineteen in a don't think so mindset. I think means mm-hmm. no. It's it was one. Of, I, I, it's been twenty years now. It's still one of the most terrifying things that's ever happened to me. And yeah, it's it's a trip, man. That it's real, like. It's like, that doesn't seem like your brain like that. Yeah. It just seems like it should be a nightmare, but no, it's just a weird phenomenon that happens sometimes. Like I remember waking up and like, oh, damn it. I don't want to wake up this early. I'm going to go back to sleep. And then I was going to get a drink of water and I couldn't move. And then all of a sudden this just growing dread filled me. And I remember like I could move my eyes. I couldn't move my body. And that scared the shit out of me. And I just remember thinking that something like unspeakably evil was like coming towards me from like coming towards my bedroom door. And we're just this wave of fear just hitting me like Ooh. so intense. Yeah, I- yeah, it's wild, man. And then, you, and then I just went right back to sleep. <laughs> and then you just like just insane that your brain works that way. But yeah, I, I uh, I've. Never been through that, but everyone everyone I know who has has that same story, and it sounds fucking yeah. Awful. That's what's so fascinating that like like why does your brain why would your brain get scared? And I've heard that too that you just feel that something is coming that's like incomprehensibly evil, like like, and then you just go to bed and you just fall <laughs> asleep again. Like thank, thanks, yeah, brain. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So we're created by a loving God, you (laughs) say. (laughs) Oh God, yeah, it uh, it sounds awful. I don't. uh, I'm not. I'm not looking to get after that any day now. Uh, So they. they're at the uh, the Storytown Village, and they go to the petting zoo. There's a couple good sight gags, like Homer insisting that this goat eat this tin can that he brought but the goat is not into that uh lisa finds a tiny little lamb at the petting zoo and right away boy do i fucking hate sheep anyone who's been around live sheep i'm sure just has disdain for sheep i've heard that i've heard family people that grew up with sheep on the farm that they're dumb as shit does that ring true to you they are the stupidest animals they're the opposite of a dog like just helpless, moronic animals. Yeah, like, can't even help themselves, like. Yeah, like, and to the point where, like, I didn't even like that show Lamb Chop as a kid. So I'm like, man, fucking sheep are dumb. <laughs> this show's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and Lamb Chop is just boring. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. It's also this insufferable. Been, this should have been passe in the late 50s. Like, what kids are enjoying <laughs> Lamb Chop? Well, speaking of lamb chops, that is uh, what they're serving at the Simpson household. I was going to... Have you ever had lamb chops? I have written down here, ask Nathan if he's ever had lamb chops. (laughs) I have my notes. Marlon, have you ever eaten lamb? Uh, I don't... Outside of a gyro, I don't think I have. And I fucking love gyro, so I probably love lamb chops. So maybe even it's time. With a, Should that be part of our homework for this to week? To eat some <laughs> lamb? Next five episodes and eat some lamb chops. I can chops. do that. I can, I can head to the butcher, get some fucking lamb chops. I, yeah. I have not eaten lamb. I've eaten mutton, which is like old sheep. And that's no good at all. Oh, I don't okay. care for that at all. It's like fucking like dark and like has like a slimy texture to it. It's real gross. Oh, interesting. Uh, I've heard good things about lamb, though, so maybe. (laughs) Okay, so there's our homework. We'll eat lamb chops. (laughs) Eat lamb chops. We're really asking a lot. Yeah, we really like to aim high here. Uh, There is a, uh, so Lisa is freaking out about the lamb chops and just envisioning, you know, her tiny little lamb and how awful this is and this like growing up on a farm and butchering our own animals like this is where this episode really like just drives off the fucking road for me because i'm just like uh god damn it but the um uh in the meantime uh Homer decides he's going to have a big barbecue with all the neighbors to show up Ned because Ned is having a family reunion barbecue next door. And it's fun to see little glimpses of other Flanderses. <laughs> yeah, that's a great visual gag. Yeah. They're all just slightly <laughs> different. Like one might have a beard. One doesn't have a mustache. One doesn't have glasses. One has curly hair, but they're all yeah, the same they're guy. They're all Flanders for sure. Um, 
<laughs> Lisa uh, haunted by this whole uh, this whole meat thing and how could people do this? She's sitting in class uh, and they're going to dissect a worm and she is finding herself unable to do it. Uh, Ralph, in the meantime, accidentally ate his worm and the t- the teacher <laughs> the teacher asks Ralph, "Well, just you just lay your head on your desk and take a nap then." And Ralph excitedly <laughs> says, "Sleep? That's where I'm a Viking." Yeah, oh, so great. <laughs> oh man, Ralphie, Ralphie, pound for pound is the best thing about this show. Ralphie's so fucking good. So every time, good. it's gold. Literally yep. every every line he says is perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lisa, uh, not going to dissect her worm. She doesn't think that that's right. And my favorite joke of the whole episode: the teacher just real quietly reaches down and presses an, a silent alarm button tra- uh, uh, titled "Independent Thought Alarm," which I thought was real <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> which we also see in the lunchroom. Yeah. When Lisa asks lunch lady Doris if she can remember when she lost her lust for <laughs> life at that job. And Principal Skinner says something along the lines of, oh, that's the second independent thought alarm of the day, and then orders Willie to get rid of all the colored chalk in the school because he thinks that's what's causing <laughs> yeah. all this independent thought. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Uh, Homer's planning his big barbecue, and uh, and Lisa is protesting, uh, begging him not to do it. The school, uh, in light of Lisa's meatless protests, um, <laughs> shows them a v- fantastic video of Troy McClure in Meat and You, Partners in Freedom. Just a great fucking, <laughs> like, 50s newsreel style educational video about the uh, about the slaughter industry, which I thought was very funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the day of Homer's barbecue, and we get a fucking great gag of him using too much lighter fluid on the grill that really it yeah. takes you for a couple of turns. That joke is a journey yeah. because he's just squeezing way too much lighter fluid into the grill, and just when you think he's done, he squeezes some more, and it does that about four times and then he tosses the can and reaches for what your brain assumes is a match, but it's a second can of lighter fluid, and here he goes. (laughs) Keeps filling it up, and then at the end, the final swerve, it just nicely lights, and that's it. No explosion, no nothing. (laughs) I was like, man, this is too good. Uh, Lisa's pissed. She has made gazpacho, which she describes as ice-cold tomato soup. And you guys don't have to eat meat. I made gazpacho. And they laugh her out of there. Uh, Someone shouts, go back to Russia. So great. Everyone's uh, had way too much to eat at the barbecue. Just in time for Homer to bring out his uh, pièce de résistance, the uh, whole roast pig on the spit. And... Lisa, who's irate at not being able to get through to these people, uh, runs away with it with the lawnmower pushing it and pushes it down a hill. And there's a great sight gag of of Homer oh. and Bart chasing this fucking pig. I may not have ever laughed harder at this show than that whole thing with the pig. Jesus, when it shot out of that yeah, dam. Yeah, it's plugged up in the it's I plugged up in a died. hole in the dam and the pressure just builds behind it until it goes flying out like it's fired from a cannon. Yeah. And then it cuts to inside of Mr. Burns' office with the whole like, I guess I should give a million dollars to the orphanage when pigs fly <laughs> and that pig flies by. So good. Holy yeah. I was dying. Well done, Simpsons. <laughs> God, that was funny. Um, Lisa runs out. Everyone's ragging on her. Uh, ends up at the Quickie Mart where Apu, uh, while she is having a breakdown and takes a bite out of a hot dog, Apu asks how she likes the uh, meatless tofu hot dogs, which she didn't even know was the case. Turns out Apu is a vegetarian as well. They go upstairs to his uh, rooftop garden that he has on top of the Quickie Mart. And wouldn't you know it, there's a goddamn beetle there oh, God, <laughs> paul yeah. and linda mccartney that's what my, my notes say 
a fucking course we got another beetle have we collected Jesus. them all at this point i mean the living yeah the we living got all ones three we living ones now. so maybe we're done no we're definitely not done with the beetles uh yeah i also uh, really like when they first get up to the top uh of the roof at the garden uh apu's like yeah i come up here to relax and grow vegetables and also to to watch uh drive-in movies from from the drive-in across the street and they pan over and on the marquee <laughs> it says now showing i spit on your grave can you imagine i yeah. spit on your grave showed to the public <laughs> Jesus. Yep. And and I think that movie did that was like a B level like drive in type movie too, which no wonder serial killing was on the it was rampant in the seventies and eighties. Yeah. Like that was a date movie. Oh my god, that movie is just Whew. reprehensible is yeah, that the word you're looking that for that movie's yeah. fucking hard to watch and the idea that yep. they would put it up 100 feet by 50 feet for anyone driving by to see Oof. and it's not like it's good you know it's not one of those hard but good and not really good either it's like. a hard uncomfortable watch Oof. yowza <laughs> so I really liked that joke that that would be up there yeah. uh Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney explain to young Lisa that like uh, essentially what I, I was, I was pleasantly surprised that this seemed to be the message of the episode, which is, yeah, you can be a vegetarian. It's fine. But it, where it becomes a problem is when you start trying to cram it down everyone else's throat. I was like, Oh, okay, good. I was happy that that ended up being the message of this. And she, uh, she, gets off the roof and uh, bids farewell to uh, to the McCartneys and Apu and meets up with Homer and apologizes for ruining the barbecue and we get our nice, wholesome, happy family ending. Oh, yeah. Watch out. yeah they, they did have a nice ending. I like when, when the Lisa and Homer, like, happy moments are always a nice touch on the ends of the episodes. Yeah, I agree. We were up to a treehouse of horror Hell episode. Hell yeah. Or we have the Trails of Horror 6, man. Time flies and you're talking Simpsons. Mm-hmm. And first thing I got to mention, uh, no intro. Nope, just that real quick, uh, crusty, headless horseman yeah. cold open and then yeah. a few credits and we're right into it. Yeah, and that, just like the kind of the typical formula, we kind of get three little shorts. Yeah. And one thing I think we've discussed before, they don't horse around with like the actual horror aspect of it. Like... Like the couch gag is all of them getting hung in front of the yeah, couch. That was, it's kind of pretty that graphic. Was, yep. That was one. I was like, not taken aback. I'm not a Southern belle. I didn't look for the fainting <laughs> couch, but I was I like, just oh. Say, <laughs> this, like, you should just be on your fainting couch <laughs> all at all times. I, <laughs> I wasn't like, oh, Lord, it just collapsed. Got the vapors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the vapors. A gentleman caller at such a late hour. <laughs> I think I think my I'm southern in my nightgown. <laughs> How dare you? I, I, I think my southern bell impression is just John Stewart's Lindsey Graham impression at this point. Oh man, Lindsey Graham is a cheap wig and some rouge away from being in, in a situation just like that. You don't think he's maybe cosplayed that a little bit? Oh, he has. He, if I know anyone who has definitely played the role of Scarlett O'Hara yeah. in in any high school production in his youth, yeah. it is Lindsey Graham. Oh, how bummed is he that he has to go to bed next to his wife? Just <laughs> hates it. Right. You're not Rhett Butler at all. Yeah, it just resents her. Like, <laughs> why, why aren't you a large mustachioed man? What? Good night, honey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why, why can't? Why could you just once tell me that you don't give a damn? <laughs> oh, so the first, the first short is Attack of the Fifty Foot Eyesores. So, uh, Homer is getting a donut at a kind of like a big boy type donut shop with a big metal donut, big boy sculpture. And of course, he wants the big donut. He doesn't want just the one they sell to normal people. So he uh, 
he very like adept, adeptly whips a chain with a hook. Yeah, <laughs> hooks that donut, rips it's it off with his car. Toss. <laughs> yeah, very. It's like, it's like fucking Laura Croft level shit. <laughs> 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 and he steals the giant metal donut, and uh, it was. And the gag's like, "Oh, what's the worst that can happen?" Turns out there's like some kind of weird electrical storm that causes all the giant advertising robots and statues to come alive and wreak havoc throughout Springfield. Like, <laughs> we get the giant cowboy with the the neon cowboy with the bottle of beer. We get the aforementioned uh, big boy that was holding the donut. Yeah. A giant devil, like a some kind of devil. I don't know what he's even trying to sell, but we get red, a giant devil. Red devil realtors is what's yeah, on his chat. You have to. It's yep. a blink and you miss it. But yes, yep. We get like a pet boys type ripoff with their giant heads and little bodies, <laughs> which is so great because they There's immediately a lot of good are. Gigs. They're too top heavy and they just yep. clang their heads hit the ground. This whole episode is just full of fun. Like this, in this clip, just like good visuals of those giant robots ripping everything apart and shit. Like, mm-hmm. oh, we even get giant Kent Brockman because there's a there's a statue or a, a, a billboard. billboard. Yeah, and that comes to life. Yeah, and I believe consumes the real Kent Brockman. Yep, eats him. You know, kind of in a uh, uh, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man type, climb the building and grab the guy up on top type move. Yeah, we're getting some good, uh, some good kaiju here. Some good, yeah. uh, some good Godzilla throwback here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because even they, 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 I think a couple times they let out Godzilla type type whales. You yeah, know, like that high pitched the Godzilla scream. scream. Yep. Um. And then it uh, turns out that the only way to defeat them is to ignore them because that's how advertising works. Is if you <laughs> ignore it, it just it's not there. And sure enough, they all turn their backs and they all collapse. They're, oh, there's also a giant uh, uh, Paul Bunyan and a giant Babe the Blue Ox too, yeah. and they they're ruining the city. But they, they, the the Springfield people have the will to turn away and ignore them, and they're able to save their city. And They're, the whole gag is just about the evils of advertising right as they cut to commercial. Yep, yeah, that's their ending gag. Yeah. The um there's a joke earlier on a couple of them with, uh, that I really liked. Uh, there's a big and tall men's clothing store and a very tall basketball player comes walking out of it. And the <laughs> cops fucking shoot him. Just like, there yeah. we go, boys. We got one. And the other cop has to be like, uh, Chief, that's just the captain of the high school basketball team. Yeah, so great. And then uh, the uh, th- there's a good gag where uh, Bart is on the shoulder of the devil and Bart is the devil on the devil's shoulder telling him to yeah. destroy the school. So good. Yeah. And then on the then he's the other devil on the other shoulder. Yeah, he <laughs> goes to the other side and gives the same devilish advice. I liked that one. There was like, you know, I like when people take pot shots at advertising and how fucking yeah. predatory it is. And then the next one we have is Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace. Which is kind of a, well, it's not kind of a, it is a direct parody of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, which, yeah, were you a big Nightmare on Elm Street guy, Marlon? No, I have only seen, um, I saw Freddy vs. Jason probably 15 years ago. Same here. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm pretty sure the only reason I watched it was because I knew Spine Shank was on the soundtrack, so. <laughs> um, and So great. <laughs> And I just watched the first Nightmare on Elm Street uh, for this past Halloween's 31 mm. horror movies uh, thing. Interesting, yeah. So, but other than that, those those are the two Freddy Krueger movies I've seen. One of which I didn't yeah. see till this year. I am I'm with you, except I have also seen that mid '90s one called uh, New Nightmare. Okay, which I really enjoyed. It's 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 a real fourth wall like. The actors are also characters type thing. And it was really unique. And I really dug it. And but I remember thinking that Freddy Krueger was just like the scariest fucking thing. I remember as a kid getting invited to a kid's birthday party and trying to find a way out of it because I found out they were going to watch Freddy Krueger movies at it. And it terrified really? me down to my goddamn bones. Huh. But then once I got older and got into fucking uh, horror movies... 
I don't know. It just it didn't do a lot for me. It's just too silly. There's a lot of silly shit in those movies. Yeah, the uh, I, was, I was more of, I was more of a Halloween guy. I like the big, like just fucking relentless silent killer. Yeah, I kind of like fucking like I like heart disease. <laughs> <laughs> I like Friday movies more than I like nightmare movies. Oh, okay. Like yeah. I'm, I'm on the and Jason I, side of the Freddy versus Jason. And I, I'm with you. I like Halloween above all of them. Halloween is fucking mm-hmm. great. And and I, I say this I having not seen fucking most of them. I haven't seen two through six or whatever, you know, like I just can't imagine. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm missing out on something great, but who knows? Yeah, I, we'll see. I, think, uh, I think when I watched the first one back in October, I think I gave it a three out of five. Like, yeah, I can see how people like this, but this isn't my thing. Yeah. It's a decent premise. The whole, like, the, the just that is a waking nightmare. The idea of not being able to go to sleep or you'll die. Like, yeah, that is a wild idea. A, like, sure. Yeah, yeah, that sounds, that sounds like something you could make eight more movies about what was it too he got the idea from reading a story about like like prisoners of war and like the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia that oh, I didn't know that any were of like that. tortured so severely that even once they were saved they were dying in their sleep and they think it was just like the trauma of like of like dreaming about those events well, that's, was causing well, that's fucking dark Wes Craven goddamn no shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like holy shit we can make a killing off this <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make so much fucking money and then he did yep boy did he ever my only <laughs> other exposure to the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise is that I fucking love the song Dream Warriors <laughs> by Dawkins. fuck yeah I by Dawkins. <laughs> oh man Doc nothing screams 80s fucking like 80s dunderhead metal than <laughs> Dawkin. <laughs> I, I can't and that is just a fucking surface judgment I've only heard a handful of their shit like I just remember seeing on like a VH1 documentary like that was like one of the maybe it was Don Dawkin. it was like right when fucking uh, Nirvana hit the charts they were he was like oh shit now I gotta go buy some flannel. Like it's that easy. <laughs> like, like that's yep. the only thing stopping Dawkin from being the biggest band in America. Is that they don't have the flannel. Is their, is their fucking sartorial choices? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I think you guys were kind of puds in your prime. I don't think anyone ever thought Dawkin was cool. <laughs> yeah. Not outside of Dream Warriors, I haven't. So. <laughs> Oh, good. And then, so it turns out with the Simpson twist, groundskeeper Willie <laughs> is the is the Freddy character because due to like shoddy funding from the school system, he burns to death in the boiler room, <laughs> and he comes back and just like in the in classic from what I know of Friday the Thirteenth, the whole thing is hey he's gonna get us in our dreams if we just play possum. We have to be proactive and try to attack him in our dreams. So they try to drag him into their world, and Lisa's there. Well, it's Fritz, Bart, and Lisa are the victims. Mm-hmm. And there's some great visuals of the different kinds of shit that uh, Groundskeeper Willie can turn into. Like he's that giant lawnmower type thing. Yeah. And then, and then he's later he's a, a spider bagpipes. Like he's yeah. got the big blown up middle with with uh, bagpipe pipes as the eight legs. Yeah. And it's it looks like it's curtains for Lisa and Bar, but Maggie comes through in the clutch and plugs his big pipe hole with her pacifier, causing him to burst. And, we're, and they defeated him. They did it's, it. it's a pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's even and it's almost all <laughs> visuals. Oh. Yeah, like everything worth talking about mm-hmm. is the visual. There is a great gig too where uh Martin takes a nap in class and ends up getting killed by Freddy in his or by Groundskeeper Willie in his dream, and apparently it's Lunch Lady Doris's job to wheel dead <laughs> children out of the classroom. <laughs> Just so great. <laughs> I mean, you assume that they're taking him to the walk-in cooler, yeah. right? That has to be where you would store a child yeah. <laughs> in a school, I guess. Yeah. I didn't want to think about that. I didn't want to logic that out, yeah. but... <laughs> 
I, I love I love the the chain of events that lead to Willie's yeah. horrible burning death at the PTA meeting. Yeah. Like he's up there just okay. Like well, first Homer fucking cranks up the heat, and then that starts the the furnace up on fire, which sets Willie on fire, and then they're voting on like. Do we want to spend seventeen dollars on new doorknobs? Nay, they all vote no, and they show the him trying to escape, but the doorknob breaking. And then, well, what about uh, fire extinguisher recharges? That's a free service provided by the fire department. Nay, <laughs> they just they're just naying yeah. every, and then they show him not being able to put himself out with the fire extinguisher. It just gives a little like poof, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he has to sit him sitting there waiting on fire while while they wrap up their <laughs> P- PTA meeting. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry, Willie. So and so has the floor. It's Millhouse's dad. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we don't we don't want a Millhouse to have two spaghetti meals in the same day. <laughs> yeah, they want the lunch schedule ahead of time oh. so they don't make the same thing for supper while while Willie sits in the corner and burns to death. <laughs> See, no, just casually sits there. And, eventually, he finally starts screaming as it gets to be <laughs> more than he can bear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then curses them all. And then we're on to the final one, which is episode, our Homer Cubed is the title of it. Yeah, which I... Right out front, fucking loved this. Yeah, it's a fucking trip, man. It is a trip. So the premise is Patty and Selma are coming. And, of course, that means Homer wants to get, you know, not be a part of that. And he tries to hide in several different spots. Uh, The kids have already taken one of the hiding spots. So (laughs) in a panic, he hides behind that random bookshelf in the living room. And turns out there's a portal to some other unknown dimension behind that. And uh, he ends up getting pushed through the portal and is now in a 3D world of, I don't even know what you would describe it, just rudimentary shapes and it's just a giant grid. Yeah, it's like the Tron grid. Yeah. Uh, and full of full of CG. Like the these sections are all, are all CGI. And like, boy, do I love 1995 CGI. Oh my God, yeah. This probably costs more. This six minutes probably costs more than every episode of Babes cost to make. <laughs> just, just these six minutes. <laughs> There's, to the point where they even make that joke. Homer's yep. standing there and he's just like, boy, this place looks expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just comically, you know, it's like so basic looking now to us. But at the time, you know, it was cutting edge shit. Like, yeah. And uh, I, it's, I, I like the poltergeist vibe it has where they can kind of hear him, kind of not. He's, like, in another world. And, and they end up getting the scientists there to try to explain what's going on and how they can get him back. <laughs> I love when he explains that Homer has crossed over into the third dimension, that they're horrified. Yep. <laughs> like, as if they know that they're cartoons and that yep. that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> so great. <laughs> and they keep trying, they keep trying. And then, oh, they also have Reverend Lovejoy there to try to convince him to walk into the light, which sounds like what you don't want to do. Right. Uh, and Bart, finally having enough of this, ties a rope to his waist and runs into the portal to try to try save Homer. And that does not work because Homer has now ripped a hole into this <laughs> time-space <laughs> continuum and created a black hole that's now eating everything. <laughs> Yeah, and the, he did it by, like, tossing that fucking cone that's bouncing around. <laughs> yeah. It, like, jams him in the ass, and he throws it away, and it sticks in the floor and yeah. creates a black hole. <laughs> and Bart is at one end of the black hole. He's trying to save trying to save Homer, but it doesn't work. Homer, like, disintegrates in that black hole. Like, Jesus. Yeah. All, and it breaks down into all of the individual 3D parts. I thought that yeah. was a good gag. Like, here's the six pieces of geometry <laughs> we made to make this Homer. Yeah. And then it ends up with him being, like, in our world. Like, yeah. In, it's just him walking down the sidewalk. And then I didn't know if there was some reference that I wasn't getting, but I don't think there was. I think there's just supposed to be him. 
I think no. it's just supposed to have a a Twilight Zone vibe. Yeah, I think. which it, it I don't does think well. It, I I don't think it's referencing anything specific, but it might be. I admittedly yeah. haven't seen a lot of it's, Twilight Zone. Yeah, it is kind of off putting. Like, yeah, so the it is, mission accomplished. Like, I'm sure that's yeah. And he's like worried. He's like walking yeah. down the sidewalk, like, uh, and people are looking at him. Yeah. And then he just goes into a shop called Erotic Cakes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the end of the yeah. episode. It was a hell of an ending, yeah. Like, that's how it ends. There's no closure at all. Like, Yeah. God, I loved that. There's so much great fucking dialogue in this episode. Like, mm-hmm. w- when Homer's kind of gets in when when he first gets behind the the bookshelf and like accidentally like sticks an elbow into the portal he's like oh what's this it's it's like something from that twilighty show about that zone (laughs) fuck (laughs) yeah and and once he's in the 3d world and people are asking like via the kind of the poltergeist voice like like what does it look like over there? And he's like, well, has anyone seen that movie Tron? And they all answer no. <laughs> yep. Like Everyone the joke is the that room. no yeah. one saw Tron. <laughs> oh God. And him, him just standing in that 3d world and like kind of poking and squeezing on himself going, I'm so bulgy. <laughs> Fuck. The ripple God, when, he, when he touches movie. his belly, like the ripple of fat that just keeps shaking. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just fucking ripples. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. That was, I fucking liked That's that it. one that was a lot. Top two, uh, treehouse of horror for me i would say i really enjoyed that yeah what else is up there like what's your it's it's probably like season three or four i really enjoyed i can't remember which though i really like uh like i think this is the only one of the three this year that i really cared for like i thought the other two were fine but nothing nothing that blew my skirt up or anything but i did really like this this last one Oh, see, I like the Freddy one a lot, too. Yeah? Yeah. I, I don't know what it was about it, but I really dug it. I thought that one was kind of the throwaway of the bunch, but it was uh, all in all. I mean, you know, whatever. These are all fucking great. Yeah, man, we are. This is a good fucking batch of episodes. Yeah. This next one, uh, episode number seven, King Size Homer. Uh, they're doing group calisthenics at work, which I didn't know was a thing. <laughs> Certainly never been anywhere I worked. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> uh, home, they're all like doing jumping jacks and shit. And uh, Montgomery Burns is leading the workouts via megaphone from a stage above. And he says, I need to see more Teddy Roosevelt's and fewer Franklin Roosevelt's, <laughs> which I thought was very funny. Yep. <laughs> Uh, one of Homer's kind of looking around, wondering where one of his coworkers is, and and it's Lenny or Carl says, "Well, he's on, he's at, he's works from home because he's on disability." So Homer is now uh, trying to get on disability, and they show him flipping through that book of all of the things that'll qualify you for disability to work at home (laughs) and some of the fucking names i only was able to write down a couple in my haste which were jugglers despair and (laughs) achy breaky pelvis yep was it lumberjack lung was lumberjack lung one of them (laughs) that might that sounds familiar holy shit and yeah, that was that was good. And then Homer finds his meal ticket. Turns out that he can get disability and work from home if he weighs over three hundred pounds. Uh, and which, as somebody who weighs more than three hundred pounds, I was like, "Wait, really?" I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> I've had jobs where forty percent of the uh, employees <laughs> <laughs> are technically disabled. <laughs> If that was the law. (laughs) (laughs) Also, once Homer hits that weight and they, and seeing how they draw the him, I'm like, is that what a 300 pound person looks like? Something bigger than that. That looks, that looks real big. Ridiculous. Oh boy. (laughs) This episode made me feel real bad throughout most of it is what I'm getting at. (laughs) Um, yeah. <laughs> I love 
uh, Homer is like trying his best, just eating junk food and whatnot, and then goes for advice, goes to Dr. Nick, who's going to help him pack <laughs> on weight. <laughs> uh, I love his general rule of thumb. If you don't know if you should eat it, rub it on a napkin, and if the napkin goes clear, you should eat it. Yeah. <laughs> they, what is it at the restaurant that Bart rubs on the uh, wall and it becomes clear? <laughs> I forget what it is, but yeah, just rub something on the a solid wall and it turns clear and a bird <laughs> runs into it. It's a great gag. Yeah. They show him eating a banana split and Bart is encouraging him to just eat around the banana because that's yeah. the part with the vitamins. <laughs> That's just empty vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's some great food labels when they're at the grocery store stocking up on junk food, such as Ham Ahoy. And then there's one that's a tub, like a cottage cheese tub, that is just, just tub. called Tub with like five Bs. Yeah. Holy I'm shit. I'm intrigued by Tub. Yeah, what is in Tub? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but he makes it, and he perseveres and pushes past the 300-pound mark and uh, gets his own his own home station and go, needs, needs some clothes, goes to a fat guy store called The Vast Waistband, which is real good. <laughs> yeah. There's like those fat motorcycle riding twins in the background. Yeah, they show them there. <laughs> Like, they're the mannequins in the store. (laughs) Fuck. Uh, Homer, uh, while looking around at his clothing options, goes for a muumuu, which is just a fucking dress as far as I can tell. Yep. The the list of clothing options he rattles off. (laughs) (laughs) One was cape, which 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 he does start wearing later yeah, too. Yeah, he which is does great. show up in a cape later on. Oh yeah. god! And and his fat guy hat, as he calls it, which yeah. I don't really know. It looks kind of like a like a it, just a plain white engineer's cap, almost like a floppy like, cap. Have we been not? Have we been getting deprived of a fat guy hat? Is there some kind of like paperwork we were supposed to sign at eighteen? <laughs> did, did did we miss this part at the meeting? Because we have the meetings, you know. Yeah. yeah, a lot of good snacks at those meetings. <laughs> oh God! So Homer in his dress is uh, working from home. Uh, Lisa not into this. Marge not into this. Bart thinks that this is a great idea and can't wait till he pulls <laughs> it off himself. Yeah. What's his, I know you. His line? I know you love yeah. a great future Bart. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I wash myself with a rag tied to a stick, <laughs> and everyone applauds. <laughs> Uh, yep. He's so brave. Big old, like, 600-pound Bart that he fantasizes about. Yeah, so great. Um, (laughs) Homer decides to take the day off, uh, or play hooky, really, because he, now that he's working from home, he thinks he can just fuck off the whole time. Uh, so he sets up the, whatever you call the bird that drinks water desk toy, Sets, mm-hmm. sets that up to just push the keys on his keyboard automatically, and he's going to go to a movie, but they won't let him in the movie theater because he is too big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of, of all the disgraces I have felt in my life, I've never not gotten let into a movie theater. Oh, I mean, I've gotten let in, but I have been in pain by the size of those movie seats. <laughs> Especially old theaters, theaters, man, like the Fargo Theater here in town. Like, yeah, this. with the ones with the built-in cup holders, because it just rips about <laughs> 10 pounds of thigh meat off a guy. <laughs> Is you gotta you gotta do like a senton bomb to get into the seat to begin with. So. And once you're in, you're in. Yeah, you're in. Well, I'm just gonna have to piss myself if that's what it comes to, because I am not getting up. Maybe not ever again. Yeah, this could be my tomb. Tear off the side of Nathan's thigh tit, needing to get to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, I've sat in some uncomfortable movie seats before. Yeah, fucking. 
like I said, historical theaters like the one here in Fargo, those are not made for us. Yep. People were just a little back arena, then. Arena seats, mm-hmm. too, like at the Fargo Dome. Especially if you're tall and fat, then it's just a nightmare. Right. I mean, like, everything's digging into your shins and your thighs, and it's just a fucking mess. Yeah, like I'm, I'm not like tall by any means. I'm six foot six foot zero like i'm six foot right on the nose and even i i'm like i am too tall for this yep. same with motherfucking airplanes being a tall fat person oh, on an man. airplane fuck me nope nope Ugh. not gonna okay. happen holy first shit first off yeah. i gotta i gotta pretzel myself into this seat and then i have to also ask you for a seat belt extender i hate flying yeah. so fucking much oh man Ugh. yeah that's why if I do, I spring for first class. It's like I, yeah, you've brought that up. I do up. not need I, my self-esteem I need to, hurt that much. I need to follow that to that path. I r- really, if I'm not, unless I'm crossing an ocean, I need to just drive everywhere because driving I love. So Oh, me too. Yep. Uh, so Homer uh, comes home all uh, all irked and miffed, not being able to go to the movie theater and... Uh, Turns out the plant is going to explode because the master plan of having the desk toy push the buttons did not work out. Uh, So he needs to get to the plant and turn it off uh, manually. So he goes, there's a great gag of like, oh, he's too fat for his car. He's too, like, he's too fat for everything, it turns out. Yeah. Finally gets to the, uh, gets to the plant after hijacking an ice cream truck and is trying (laughs) to get to the manual shutoff valve. And we get one, one more fat joke on the way out the door. He falls in the, in the vent cap and plugs it with his own girth, preventing the plant from exploding. (laughs) Yeah. There's that great gig from inside the tank. <laughs> He's getting like hosed yeah, and Yeah, they're like pressure washing the inside of the tank and yeah. him so that he can get out yeah. of there while he accepts an award from Mr. Burns. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, we go out on uh, Mr. Burns vowing that he'll get Homer thin again and Homer not being able to do one sit-up and Burns just throwing his hands in the air and saying, whatever, I'll pay for the liposuction. (laughs) I don't ever hear about liposuction anymore. No. They find out something bad about that. (laughs) Or or, are they just so good at it now that it's not even a thing? Like it's so commonplace that it's unremarkable now? I don't know. But yeah, I thought that too. Like, boy, there's a fucking word I haven't heard of in a long time. It's a real 90s, 80s thing. Yeah. You hear about like fucking staplings and gastric bypasses, but you don't hear about just regular old yeah. lipo anymore. Yeah. Well, I think liposuction was never used for serious weight loss. It was just like little cosmetic things. Yeah, just like, take some off of the like take some of the, off of the thighs before I go to the beach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah get rid of that pooch before you know you're fucking ten years. Yeah, I got union. nothing but pooch. I got I got yeah. so many pooches. I got a litter of pooch. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> just, <laughs> I have little pooches hanging off my big pooch. <laughs> They're called skin tags. <laughs> Uh, that's what the fingernail clippers ah, are for. Ah, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we might want to take a quick break for our we're squeamish oh, listeners. Boy. So uh, right now, turn the volume up. I'm going to tell you, you ever get those, uh, inf- I always been told they're inflamed taste buds, like those painful little bumps at the end of your tongue? No. Oh, man, they suck. It just, I mean, they. I say they suck. They last a few days, but they irritate the shit out of you. There's these little bumps at the end of your tongue. And I have learned that I will now light up a, I'll take a lighter and I'll heat up a fingernail uh, clipper. I'll fucking clip those things off I my hate tongue. This. I hate everything about this. <laughs> you thought this podcast was going to be just good times and horsing around with your old buddy Nate. Sometimes there's some un- inconvenient truths that you I, need to. I didn't see there. I legit did not see where that was going all the way until the end. Yeah. yeah. I've, Man, I've getting off there feels pretty that. good. Never oh no once. shit good no. for you man you get many cankers you get you canker man no not not really no fuck I'll, lucky duck I, like i'll bite the fuck out of my tongue or the inside of my cheeks yeah but, like, that sucks too but uh that's about 
fuck. That's about to, all the mouth lesions I ever had. Oh, up I'm with. a mouth fuck. I am riddled with mouth lesions. <laughs> Not as much. I used to get a lot more cankers in my teens and twenties. I don't get them like I used to. Fuck canker sores suck too. Hmm. That not uh not, not a canker boy, huh? No. Good for you. Uh, but it's all trade off. Like I I grew up before braces with the most horrifying looking teeth. So oh. like my teeth all looked like they were fighting. Like some turn some were running northwest or I'm sorry, north south, <laughs> some were running east west. So, like a, some of them didn't get the email that mouths are supposed to be horizontal. Yeah. It looked like uh looked like the his, his <laughs> Marlon's nose teeth are growing in quite nicely. It's like I don't think he's supposed to have those. It's like roll call on the first day of boot camp. Everyone's pointing a different direction. No one's lined up straight. Well, just like tombstones in an old graveyard. Holy shit. That's been heavily vandalized by Satanists. Yeah. I, I'm not how many throat teeth are you supposed to have? Fucking none. What's wrong with you, boy? I, I kind of had kind of weird buck teeth. Then a dentist is like, hey, you got too many of these fuckers. He popped a couple out one afternoon, and my teeth kind of been pretty normal. I mean, I probably, they'll tell anyone they should have braces because they want your money. But, I mean, like, I can breathe and eat all right. So, I think my teeth are, I mean, my teeth are falling out of my head at an alarming rate now. But structurally, structurally, they were originally all right. <laughs> they were where they were supposed to be. Oh, Lucky bastard, not me, man. Yeah. <laughs> Megawatt smile is what I've been described as having. Oh, my teeth looked like a handful of almonds, just no <laughs> order whatsoever. <laughs> Woof. Just little dog food nibs, all uh, all doing their own thing. A bunch of real independent thinkers up in my fucking gob. <laughs> Nacho cheese corn nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know how many you, you have a smile that's described as savory <laughs> uh, oh, fuck. just a bowl of tortilla chips in my mouth <laughs> You have a lot of crunching sounds when you're eating soup. Like, like jagged rocks around the lighthouse. Yeah. 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 But oh. I don't know how many thousands of dollars it took, but they're all where they need to be now. Now my teeth are dope. But whew, it took there some work. Go. We had to hook, we had to ratchet some things to some other things and get the fucking winch. Yeah. It was, uh, my, my brother needed some drastic dental work done and. I'm just taking the trip to Minot, and afterwards, my dad was just like, "Well, we're a family that cannot afford dental work." <laughs> I was just kind of like, <laughs> well, "That's that." We're done. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep. laughs> well, I got you kids that VCR three years ago. That's good enough. <laughs> There's some trade-offs. <laughs> Holy shit! So we are up to our final episode of the night, or whenever you're watching this, whenever what or time listening. it is. Uh, we're up to. Yeah. I don't know how We're you're watching to, uh, this. Do you just listen to the podcast while you stare at your, your <laughs> blank phone screen? I always assume we were live streaming this. <laughs> what I put on all this foundation makeup? That's what takes me so long. Mar Marlon, you told me I had to buy all this cam all these cameras. <laughs> so uh, my my suspicions are true. You've been you've been only fans of me against my will. <laughs> I always I always wondered why you insisted that I put on quote something slutty for the podcast. I don't. <laughs> I never got it until just now. Yeah, I've I've been making okay. four bucks a month off all these suckers. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you have a smaller pair of basketball shorts? Are all of them oversized? Yeah, you you got the baggy ones, like modern ones. But do you, do you got any of the seventies basketball? Yeah. Like, let's. You got any uh, John Stockton's in there? Let's you get creep my them up. Let's creep them up a little. I want to. I want to see the definition of your quads. <laughs> Spoiler alert: there isn't much. <laughs> Some very amorphous quads. <laughs> Don't tell you what, Nathan. Don't be afraid to let a nut spill out every once in a while. I'm not saying yeah. take it out, but if it happens, it happens. Sometimes the biscuit can fall out of the basket. 
Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. That's a shade of skin you don't uh, need to see. <laughs> it's a color that doesn't occur in nature. Is that, a, is that, is that nutsack skin or is that just a real wide stretch mark? Either way, that's awfully purple. <laughs> did, you, did you spill some chocolate milk like a long time ago and never got around to cleaning it up? <laughs> some strawberry quick. <laughs> <laughs> You sit on one of those cherry-filled chocolates earlier? What's happening? <laughs> that is a beat-up taint if I've ever seen one. <laughs> a beat-up taint. <laughs> what you're doing down there, but you better start using a coaster because it's leaving a mark. <laughs> Use oh. <laughs> that, that fucking thing as a candle stand. <laughs> uh, oh. That ain't hot oh, wax, brother. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so the Simpsons. <laughs> you melt a crayon in there? What's going on? Uh, okay, yes, the Simpsons. <laughs> Fuck. It's like a beat up old piece of fruit leather. <laughs> How'd you bruise your peach? <laughs> <laughs> Mother Simpson is the name of the episode. <laughs> this also involves a forced, uh, outside of the workplace, forced work activity where they have to clean up the the riverside and the in the mountains of Springfield. <laughs> yep, they're cleaning and up the ditches. Did you ever have that in any of your day jobs where you had to do like a kind of like a help the community type thing? Um, not that I can specifically remember, but I, like, I was so involved with 4-H as a youth that I'm sure you I know have about picked it. up yeah. garbage, like, around, definitely, like, around the fairgrounds, probably in some ditches, maybe, I don't, yeah. uh, I don't specifically remember, but all, almost assuredly, yes. Were you the right age? Did you ever get in on picking ditches, not as, like, a good Samaritan, but as a financial venture? Were you that level of poor? Because we were for a hot minute. <laughs> uh, no, I don't remember picking up ditches as a as yeah, an entrepreneur. For the aluminum, for the cans. Oh my, yeah. You start doing the math on that. It's alarming. It's like, <laughs> we're making a cent an hour. <laughs> you figure out our costs. Yeah, like al well, aluminum recycling. It's like it's better than nothing, and it's good for the environment. But it's not a job it's not like retirement yeah. it's, money <laughs> it's not like finding buried treasure right <laughs> the, 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 the balloon market is much much better than the fucking scrap aluminum yeah. market oh look at all these bush light cans oh, yeah. i'm going to reno yeah <laughs> i remember thinking like holy shit with all these cans what what couldn't i afford i, I learned i could not afford literally fucking anything, anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, can, I, can i buy a portion of that fucking mr good bar <laughs> <laughs> can, I buy can you pro, can you prorate these rollos for me <laughs> I can only afford two of the five. Oh, God. Can, can I give you this entire pickup box trailer full of beer cans and you give me one of those dumb, dumb lollies that you get at the yeah. doctor? If you're a well, brave we'll boy give, during your shots. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the dumb, dumb lollies. I forgot about, oh, man, the way that stick would taste on your tongue once you got all the, oh, because you, you want to savor every bit of it, but you're licking 80% stick. I don't want to say licking stick ever again. I just realized that now. <laughs> I don't like how that makes me feel. That, that, like, I'm not claiming their quality or anything, and the stick is real rough. And, and as soon as you reach it, it's mm -hmm. it's bang it's dissolved and in yep. your bloodstream but yep. <laughs> all things considered a dumb dumb lolly pretty decent lolly it just made you feel recognized you don't get a lot of that as a kid you're just kind of invisible <laughs> so let's you know hey i'm seeing you you're sitting back there like a big boy not raising a fuss <laughs> letting mom do the banking yep. <laughs> here you go <laughs> good work on being the, uh, a good kid now you can have yep. you can have one dum-dum a root beer one no you weren't that good <laughs> yeah 
It's not your fucking birthday. Yeah, it's not your. <laughs> yeah. you, do, you only get a root beer one on special occasions. <laughs> there wasn't a presidential assassination or anything. This was an historical <laughs> moment. <laughs> And I, the, the grocery store in my hometown, the, the Sharon, one of the clerks, who was an absolute angel, she would give the little kids a balloon, which I think the parents always weren't the most impressed because that we know what that meant. They had to blow up a balloon while driving because <laughs> <laughs> I could not wait a whole fucking trip home for a balloon to get blown. That shit had to happen. Now. And did you not have? Did you not have the lung capacity to blow up a balloon? Oh, no. it's not, not when I was like four. Oh, okay. okay. I think you're, I think you're I, overestimating your lung capacity. At that age. No, I was underestimating <laughs> what age you thought I was like a teenager receiving <laughs> balloons at the doctor. Because in my head, yeah, in my head, this is senior I'm year. 16. You need this physical for basketball, and now you get a balloon, <laughs> and then still are insisting that one of your folks yeah. blows it up. God, I, I was the way, same way too. If there was like a, ser- a prize in the cereal box that I was intrigued by, I would always discreetly flip open that box of cereal and jam my arm down and pull it, <laughs> crushing every. So now we have cereal powder for the next week and a half. <laughs> but Which, by God, I need that useless plastic trinket or I'm fucking have a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> knowing And knowing now, drinking as many protein shakes as you do, I bet cereal powder makes for a pretty good good protein shake minus oh, the protein part but i'm yeah. sure it makes for a good <laughs> shake yeah. yeah oh man mix that up with some like some milk and a little bit of ice to keep a cool fuck yeah I'll man maybe you, that fucking yeah maybe you duck into the kitchen pulverize some golden grams and report back to us <laughs> yeah. i am intrigued look at us and oh man we gotta <laughs> have, how, do, how does one patent something <laughs> i don't i don't know I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Sounds <But> exhausting. <laughs> try it. Try it with your lamb chops this week. I, yeah, I also remember being a little kid and f- just being f- crestfallen by the fact that I was never going to learn how to whistle. I just remember thinking that was oh no no it's blow a bubble with gum. I remember just like not having the mouth coordination for that. Just like Could you spit not my that? gum in the yard and just picking it up and put it back in my mouth and try it again. <laughs> 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 Is there no more white trash thing you can imagine than a kid out his front yard spitting his gum out and put it right back over in his and mouth, over again, covered in gravel? <laughs> I'm going to get it one day. Fighting off a grasshopper for oh, it. I remember just thinking, like, I, can't, I couldn't. I mean, I was really little. I was like five. But I just remember thinking, this is impossible. Like, how do they do it? How do these wizards do this? <laughs> did, did you eventually learn? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. fuck, bro. I'll, uh, I'll blow, blow bubbles that'll blow your fucking mind. Because <laughs> <laughs> my immediate thought is, oh, maybe that's why. Maybe if he can't blow a bubble, that probably explains why he's selling his digit play so heavily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got zero mouth skills. On the, on the subject of that. Oh, boy. Did you ever Good. know anyone? Okay. No, quite. I'm more on the subject of back going back to the gum. Did you know anyone that could whistle with a blade of grass? Was that a thing people did in your hometown? I'm pretty sure my old man could. That's a bad thing. Right. Fuck yeah. Like, I never I could. could. Has, is there anyone alive? Like you almost have to be able to remember the Vietnam War to do that. Like, it's just we genetically have changed. We can't do it. We're not physically capable yeah, of it. We can't. The, we just evolved past it. Like we can't. We can't fit in theater seats. Yeah. And we can't whistle with grass anymore. <laughs> we just become big talentless blobs. <laughs> Could your dad do one of those crazy loud whistles, like for like scaring animals or attracting animals? <laughs> uh, he could, uh, if I'm remembering right, uh, I think he could whistle like just normally, no fingers in the mouth or anything, but give a pretty decent loud whistle with no assistance. But no, he couldn't do like the basketball coach fingers in the mouth or anything oh, like that, yeah. which I've always been so jealous of people yeah. who can do that. Fuck yeah. Like, I can whistle. I can whistle pretty well. I can put some bravado on it. I can, like, I can, I can, I don't mean to brag, but I can motherfucking whistle a tune. I'm a little songbird over here. But, like, <laughs> these people that can just, like, take their middle finger and thumb and make that circle and put that in their mouth, like, mm-hmm. like they're throwing up the shocker. 
like yeah and then whistle <laughs> oh man i fucking wish i could do that so badly yeah. See, my dad could do one that didn't involve the hands it was like just a sharp inhale and like yeah it was a bit louder than fuck yeah mm-hmm. i that was not a skill that was passed down through the lineage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one, that one, not genetic. Yeah. <laughs> I just have a sneaking suspicion he doesn't want his kids to be as cool as he was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you showed him because you're, I'm sure sure you're way cooler. <laughs> yeah. We just talked it's about your taint stuff. bruises for five <laughs> straight fucking minutes. <laughs> Yeah, they got the most <laughs> character-filled taint in town. <laughs> I, I have a taint that should have its own NPR show, <laughs> just telling tales from the road. <laughs> I love that you describe your taint the way people describe an old house. Like, no, it's not shitty yeah, and run lots, down. It has character. That's it's lots of character. If, <laughs> fucking rebranding those, your gooch. Yeah. Yeah. If those walls could talk. <laughs> if this taint could talk. There's another begging for mercy. There's another t shirt. It's, it's it's taking a licking and it's barely ticking. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting all our merch ideas from this one episode. <laughs> I think it's some kind of some kind of gooch pad. <laughs> Some kind of some kind of gooch padding. Jesus Christ! It's the most fucked up call I've ever gotten. I've worked at Etsy for thirteen years. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know the word no was in Wish. dot com's vocabulary, but. <laughs> If not even Wish will touch it. (laughs) Holy fuck Wish is so great. (laughs) Oh, man. Outside outside of the targeted ads I get on Facebook, I've yet to to dive in. (laughs) Because I know that if I click on one of those Wish ads, I will see nothing but Wish ads for the rest of my fucking life. I have, yeah, Jan, shout out to Jan, one of our friends and faithful listeners. We have both. We have, if, if Wish is the new dark web, we are on some government watch lists. Oh, That's, boy. I get all of my earbuds through Wish because if you can wait six to 60 weeks to get them in the mail. <laughs> Because sometimes the children that make the electronics pass away and they need to get new ones trained. Jesus in. Christ. <laughs> but hey, they're the same ones making the fucking Apple ones. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Just with wish they cut out the middleman. <laughs> <laughs> do sometimes my ears sting from them? Yes, they do. But <laughs> they cost $7 and they sound great. <laughs> Uh, I had to wait an extra month for my earbuds while they get a fresh batch in. A new <laughs> harvest of youngsters. Yeah. You gotta wait for their hands to get big enough to hold the, the dexterity to hold those tiny screwdrivers. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Is this the world we live in? This is free market capitalism. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is what people fight so hard to keep. Yeah. <laughs> We're number one. They're number Number and last. Yeah. I'm going to put that Jimi Hendrix solo in here again. (laughs) So we are literally 15 seconds into this episode. We've been jabbering about nonsense, but that's what they come here for. That is. (laughs) So Homer does not want to take part in the uh, cleaning of the river. So he he spends $600 on a lifelike Homer doll, which he throws down the uh, waterfall and is crushed and sucked into the... uh, the hydroelectric dam and they assume <laughs> destroyed just so him and Bart can lay in the backyard. <laughs> they don't even do anything fun. Yeah. He fakes his own death just to lay in the hammock for a, yeah. on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bart is just bored and hitting the cement patio with a hammer over and over again. Yeah. Just breaking up the cement. <laughs> yeah. And again, Homer's counting it off. Yeah. God. 
<laughs> so uh, because of this, because Homer, just, he's like a fucking bug. He doesn't think of anything in advance. You know, everything's just, he's just in the moment. Of course, the whole town thinks Homer's dead. <laughs> just a great beginning to this. Like all those people, they show up and Marge is just staring at them all confused. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, God. they're all crestfallen. It's like yep. Flanders and Reverend Lovejoy. They're all so uh, man. sad. The Marge laughs hit so much harder. I enjoy a good Marge gag so much. Because she's usually just like the straight man. She usually just keeps this plot going, you know, mm-hmm. like the rest of them are the kooky ones. And she's just, yeah, like, but I love it when she's the one that delivers the laughs because it's always so unexpected. Yeah, she's kind of the flat one the whole time. So when she yeah. is in on jokes, it's real good. <laughs> yeah. And Homer just thinks that none of this really matters, but they end up losing the power. They end up <laughs> shit goes haywire because they've he's been listed as legally dead. So he has to jump through some government red tape to prove that he's alive and during this uh, he, it is revealed uh, i think he's that's like the county clerk or something like that yeah the hall of records re- yep yeah, and it's revealed that in fact his mother is still alive and he's always been told that his mother passed away uh he goes out to the uh he points to the grave that he's he's looked at every day when he drives by it as a kid or on the bus or something like that he goes and looks at it turns out it is the grave of walt whitman yeah not even <laughs> close poet walt <laughs> whitman <laughs> So he ends up falling into his own grave because they have dug a grave, assuming he's dead. And that's when he meets his mother. She has come to pay her respects. And we get quite the fascinating backstory that her mother was a, you know, common, you know, just domesticated housewife with a unloving husband, Grandpa Simpson. Yeah. And <laughs> but young she, son, Homer. Yeah. Who is delightful. And... She is turned on by the uh, the rising revolutionary tide in this country with the hippie movement. And they are uh, at the local university standing up against uh, chemical warfare, which, of course, is ran <laughs> by one Mr. Montgomery Burns, yep. uh, who, who is in a very weird hair situation. He's not fully bald. He has like a bacon strip of hair across the top. Yeah, still. he's in a real weird middle comb over period. Yeah. I bet it's almost freeing when you can finally give up the ghost with hair and just like, cause there's gotta be a point where it's like, you can still keep it going. And then, but once it's finally, I bet it's almost like, okay, this is a chapter in my life and now I'm going to shave my head. And this is what we're doing from now on. And it's like, okay, we're done. On on to fucking chapter three. I don't know, man. I think I would resent it till I was in the dirt. I think I yeah, would hate but, it. But, you don't think you have a normal shaped head? You seem like you could pull it off. No, I do have a normal shaped head, and I've 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 shaved it before, but I would prefer to have hair. Yeah, like when the I, I and when the reaper the the hair reaper's cold hand finally ta- <laughs> rips out the last of it, I'm gonna be mad. Like. Like, it flashed across my mind not 24 hours ago. Like, we're in a pandemic. Everyone is stuck at home. No one's seeing each other. And I'm currently unemployed. If you're going to get plugs, now's the time to get plugs. Oh, oh, I thought you were going to say extensions. And I was like, yes, please. (laughs) I'm picturing you like long Bo Derek beads, like (laughs) flipping around whenever you turn your head. Like... If, That's a perfect ten if I've ever seen one. If now's if now's the time to get fake hair, oh like, man, it's yeah. now. You know, yeah. Eve. You need to embrace. I think you need to be a classic. You don't want to go with this new fad of hair plugs and stuff. Like that get a rug, bro. Get a. Get a if it ever I, comes, do it. I would fucking oh my god. I I would swoon <laughs> for you. I would like. Well, this relationship has reached a whole new level. <laughs> Fucking rocking a hairpiece in 2020 is so bonkers. Like, but it has to happen. They're still fucking making them, I'm sure. Yeah, and like, so I have a friend who uh, uh, she makes wigs 
and and deals in wigs she and extensions she's in that world and she has definitely on more than one occasion like had a text conversation with me about like you ready for a toupee yet because she runs in that world and she's yes. and she will send me videos unsolicited yes. of dudes getting like because toupees look fucking good as hell now it's 2020 they got oh, it figured no. out now you know it doesn't look like a fucking dead possum laying over your oh, forehead yeah. anymore <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like fucking hair. And every time I'm just like, God damn it, stop sending me this shit. It's like, if, I'm intrigued. It's like if you ask enough times, I'm going to fucking do it. And I don't yeah. want to. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we've maybe had this discussion, but I certainly better keep my hair for a long time because I, if I lost my hair, it's live under a bridge time because I have the skull of a troll. First off, it's gigantic, lopsided, which is troubling, and a flat spot easily the size of an average frying pan. Literally could be used as a putting green. My mom explained it, that my head, again, I'm four foot long as a baby, so it ain't meant to fit in a human womb. I'm more like a moose baby. <laughs> God, for just a so, second, I thought you meant just your head was four feet long, and that made for a very... Very funny visual in my brain. Just, you, like, check it. You, you just, I looked like just, a gray alien as a baby. <laughs> <laughs> just long with a giant head. <laughs> Big, gross long eyes. Long fingers, too. And Everything about mom, you is elongated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my mom is fucking five foot three on her tiptoes. So she said my head was like in her rib cage when I was like the last like four months. Of the, she's like, yeah, you weren't were a baby. She was like, well, that explains my fucking that head looks like a xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, it all adds How many up. How fucking like, teeth does it have? You're born with teeth. <laughs> yeah. Just like giant choppers. Like, like a 70s British soap opera star. <laughs> weird ass horse baby over at the full box. This is giant, weird, hairless Hugh Grant over here. <laughs> I was just envisioning this elongated head. You look like the alien from Alien. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Simpson, uh, they, her and the rest of the counter, the revolutionaries decide they're going to, they're going to kill all the nuclear or the germ warfare. Uh, they're going to release an antibiotic in the air to uh, kill off. There was all sorts of different kinds of anthrax type plagues that are out there that could be weaponized and it works, but they do trip some kind of alarm and her and all the hippies are running away. But uh, Mr. Burns is trampled by them and Mrs. Simpson, a uh, sweetheart that she is, turns to help him, which was not smart because he now got a good look at her. And yeah. She is released, uh, released it. And, oh, we get some great college age uh, Chief Wiggum. He's <laughs> <laughs> a campus cop. Of course, he's yeah, a campus cop. Campus security. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my God. I, you know me well enough to know that I'm usually, you know, nice boy Nathan, but I had a really bad day on campus once or just something was shitty in school. I'm sure just life was just shitty. I was probably failing every class and. I walked out to my car and this little fucking dude in his pretend police uniform was giving me a fucking ticket and I fucking bullied him out. And that's just not my nature, but he doesn't know I'm not that way. I'm a big human. So he might mm -hmm. think I'm a tough guy, which is hilarious if you yeah. know me, <laughs> but like, I like, I was like, how fucking shitty of a life is it that like, you're getting bullied by me, so I don't have to pay a fifteen dollar parking <laughs> fee, which I am in all rights. I was in the wrong. I was like parked, like double parked in a handicap spot because I always showed up to class very late. God. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, what a life! But don't be that person. <laughs> don't be the campus <laughs> cop. Don't. What crimes are you stopping that are of any relevance? Yeah, like, how how desperate are you for the most minuscule bits of power? Pow. Oh, good point. Yeah. Fucking hall monitor. Get out of here. Mm hmm. So she now has to go on the run because Mr. Burns saw her and it has been leaked to the police. And so she has to abandon her sweet baby boy. Well, you're not a baby, but her little kid and her fucking completely 
loveless husband who <laughs> probably just only noticed she was gone when he got hungry. Because <laughs> <laughs> he is a shitbag of a man. <laughs> just, yeah. The, just the classic in the recliner drinking beer in a white tank top. Just like, oh, I do like boy. how it's, uh, it's what's his name, sideburns that turn her on to the new world of the 1960s. Uh, Joe, Joe fucking Namath. Joe Namath, yeah. Oh my god! I lo- I had that written down. I was going to address like the she's radicalized yeah. by Joe Namath's yeah. sideburns. And uh, Grandpa goes, "Look at those sideburns. He looks like a woman." <laughs> <laughs> Which women don't have sideburns. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and then he is like, "Look at Johnny Unitas there. That's a haircut you can set your watch yeah, to with so just great. the fucking very, tabletop, very fucking symmetrical military yeah. cut." Yeah, I did love that fucking that's what radicalized her was Joe Namath and his sideburns. Yeah, and so he she's back. She's with the Simpson family. She's told them the truth and they are keeping her undercover. But due to a trip to, I believe, the post office. Yep. Uh, she trying to, you know, has the sunglasses and a head wrap thing on, but, uh, Mr. Burns, who is for some reason mailing his own letters, sees her and remembers her. And now it's, now it's on. Now there's a manhunt at the, uh, guys from, uh, Dragnet are now on the case, which that's what that is in reference to. That's those two old men are, uh, (laughs) there's a great kind of. Where they're talking about like the the hippies and the and like because they were that was always a real straight edge you know the hippies are lunatics type show because it was you know that's who they were pandering to was older folks not you know not not fucking college age kids but that line was like right. gee you've never been the same since your son came back crazy from Vietnam and the other guy goes <laughs> it's a pain that never ends and then it just cuts. <laughs> Holy shit, it's a man. <laughs> I'm pulling those punches. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just how he delivers that one. Because both of those actors, uh, one of which ended up becoming like the next captain character on MASH. That's what I know him from. But yeah, they oh, okay. both delivered their lines very, you know, because that was that was like the tagline was just the facts, ma'am. When they, they'd be questioning somebody. So they were very, huh. by the book, they were good cops. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I I figured that all of that stuff with those two detectives was a reference to something, but I've never seen mm-hmm. Dragnet. It's so a reference to a show that was fucking 25, 30 years old when this aired. You know, it's like a fucking 60s show. So it, oh, okay. it was old back. I only know it because back then fucking in the late 80s, Nick at Night threw every, anything they could get their hands on against the wall to see if it would stick when it came to rain. <laughs> I've seen far too many episodes of My Three Sons, which I'm sure wasn't funny when it originally aired. (laughs) I Uh, think I only know the word dragnet because didn't they make a movie with Dan Aykroyd? And Tom Hanks, maybe. That's kind of a big cast. Yeah. Huh. Um, there's another great that's they're all back at the kitchen table it's like grandma simpson and grandpa simpson they've met they've kind of reconciled but they're talking about like everything and how much how crazy it is that she's back and then it's like you could but you could maybe go live with grandpa and they all just have this big hearty laugh <laughs> at the idea of her living with grandpa and then grandpa who is also laughing just goes oh i'm a living joke <laughs> jesus <laughs> Uh, I loved earlier when he first like met her and saw that she was back. They like talked back and forth for just a a moment. And then he turns to walk away and then turns back and is like, so now that you're back, do you want to have sex? Like just no, no (laughs) finesse at all. Mm -mm. I don't think there was a whole lot of finesse in grandpa's game at any point. No, I don't think so either. (laughs) And then uh, he just, he immediately recovers from it. He's just yep. like, huh? Ah, just thought I'd ask. Gotta What's try. For dinner? Yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, and somehow, Mr. Burns, I don't know how he finds out, he puts two and two together somehow and gets it so that he knows that she's with the Simpsons. That she's with, oh, they find out about Patty and Selma and they notice that she has Homer's uh, 
tombstone. <laughs> Homer's tombstone. Yeah, which they were as very their eager coffee to, table. Yeah, very eager to purchase. So then they show up. It's a lot like, I'm sure it's like shades of uh, Branch Davidian where they show up in tanks and shit. <laughs> which yep. if, yeah, if nothing, nothing spells laughter like the Branch Davidian saga. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't can't spell chuckles without yeah. Waco. Without, yeah, without Waco or Koresh. <laughs> and so they burst in. They're looking for um, Grandma Simpson, but she is long gone because they received an anonymous tip. And the anonymous tip was from one Chief Wiggum. Who, because of her releasing that antibiotic, <laughs> cleared up his uh, his adolescent asthma enough for him to pass the police academy, which I fucking loved yep. as a plot. That was so well done. Yep. <laughs> He's explaining it. Of course, Homer just hangs up halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah, whatever. It's blah, blah, blah. And just hangs up on him. <laughs> As he's about to completely out himself as the anonymous yep. tipster, it's like, uh, who would grow up to be chief? Well, yep. <laughs> so well done. And then we get a nice little kind of goodbye, like, I'll never, you know, you're, I'm always your mom, because she had some of her hippie pals and an electric Volkswagen bus show to pick her up. <laughs> yep, pick her up. To, she's on the lamb again. She's back in the underground with the rest of yeah. the... With the Seattle Seven or whatever the hell they were called. <laughs> Some other hippie revolutionary types. Yeah. Abby Hoffman, is that his name? Yes, it is. Yeah. Good work. Look Thank at you. you. <laughs> Knowing your rev- <laughs> your favorite revolutionary, Abby Hoffman. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Fuck this, me, those are some good episodes. Yeah, good batch. That one in particular, I really liked. Uh, there, there's, there's a moment I like stopped and paused it because I had to write it down. We've we've now lived in the Simpson house here for what, like 135 episodes or something like that. I never like stopped and really just drank in the decor of the Simpson home. And once you see it, you can't unsee it because like the color scheme of the Simpsons home. And I know it's a cartoon, but Mm -hmm. the, like they have a blue dresser with orange drawers and on top of it, (laughs) a hot pink and teal lamp with against these light pink walls. The interior design of the Simpson home is Hundred percent off its tits. Yeah. Just cracked me. I don't know what it was, yeah. but there was something about seeing the dresser. I paused it and just like drank in the whole frame and was like, "This house is bug fuck." Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! And there's my my other favorite moment from that episode uh, when Homer first meets his mom at his empty grave. He's like, they're catching up and reminiscing and he goes, Oh, just, just so you know, uh, be careful. I have a tendency to ruin the nice moments. Oh, and fuck there's yeah. a pause for a second. And then a pelican flies in and lands on his head and drops a fish down the front of his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. And how he doesn't do anything to get, Get that pelican to fly away. It just yep. perches on his head and he's living with it. <laughs> yep, he doesn't react to any yeah. of it. But god damn it, when that pelican dropped the fish down the front of his pants. Fuck. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, I was dying. Yeah, that was very good. Yeah, solid episode. Good all around. Uh, <laughs> his, uh, Mona is uh, the name of his mom. Mona, played by the incomparable motherfucking Glenn Close, who is so good. Oh, I did not know that, but yeah. I like Glenn Close mm-hmm. a lot. She uh, yeah. she fucking kills it in season four of The Shield, and I will never not praise Glenn Close ever since. She's one of the few actresses that's been able to pull off the staying readily employed after the age of 40. Yeah. The unfortunate reality of Hollywood. Yeah. It's, uh, she, she's it's, always, I mean, she's not the, she was, she was a legit leading lady, you know, up until the early nineties, but she's been able to find work, which is, you know, cause good. Cause she's very good at it. So we, we need more Glenn close. She's a great <laughs> actress. Yeah. I, uh, 
I always feel like she gets uh, forgotten amongst the Susan Sarandons and Helen Mirrens and Meryl Streep's Meryl of Streep's, the world. Yeah, yeah, good, very. Because she's that age too. Yeah, so yeah, I feel like she's always the the odd the odd woman out in uh, in Hollywood mm-hmm. as far as older ladies getting work. Everyone should appreciate them. Some Glenn Close, Cruella de Vil. Not quite. Oh, that good point. <laughs> Known by many different ages. She was in some children's movies. Yep. Uh, she p- plays her role so well in Fatal Attraction. She is very scary. Uh huh. She's terrifying in Fatal mm-hmm. Attraction. Mm-hmm. She won't be ignored. No, nope. no, she oh. won't. <laughs> she my, lets uh, you know. <laughs> my brain thinks uh, Fatal Attraction, Basic Instinct, and Single White Female are all the same movie, and they are not. Like not yeah. even close. <laughs> Single, I've never seen Single White Female. That's uh, Jennifer Jason Lee is the cuckoo bird. And, uh, <laughs> oh, man, uh, Bridget Fonda is like yeah. the victim, right? Yes, I believe so. I think yeah. I'm pretty positive that's Fonda. Man. I think Bridget Fonda just retired. Like, she made the choice. Like, I think maybe she saw, too, that she's, you know, not going to get the role she wants. So she's like, fuck you guys. I'm just done. Peaced out. Yeah, like bought a like a computer repair store. <laughs> she does it. Like Bridget Fonda she fixing iPhones. <laughs> she's great. She replaced my cracked screen. This is yeah, wonderful. She's selling ref- refurbished phones on Craigslist. <laughs> she, she replaced my slopped out charging port. Like this is great. Just good work, reasonable prices. <laughs> She's no Glenn Close, but I mean, she yeah. does good work. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Joan Allen. Not Maybe she's not quite as old as Glenn Close, but she's got to be right around there. She's Yeah, I feel like she's a little younger, but probably not by yeah. a whole hell of a lot. Yeah, probably more so that she didn't get famous until she was probably well into her 30s. She was yeah, never like a young true. star. Yeah, yeah, Joan Allen is the shit. Yeah, she's a good one. That's a sentence that probably doesn't get said. <laughs> Joan often. Allen is the, <laughs> shit. the shit. Yes, you're probably right. Like, like I'm talking about a skateboarder. <laughs> uh, she's got uh, she's got those born movies to hang her hat on. I oh guess. yeah. I mean, even those are old at this point. Fucking yeah. See, born she had a run in, in like the late nineties, early aughts, where she was. She she was in the Nixon movie. She's great. Oh man, in the Ice Storm, which is a fucking bummer of a movie, but it's so good. No, I don't know. She's that in one. Pleasantville. She's in Pleasantville. Okay, that black yeah. and white. Yeah, that's a good one. She's like the unfulfilled wife in Pleasantville. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a movie called The Contender, where she runs for president. That's really good. That nobody saw because people don't see movies like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, which Transformer <laughs> is this based around? <laughs> Which Transformers is this the, Joan Allen voice? <laughs> is this finally that star scream we've been waiting for? Nope. It's a, it's a political thriller. <laughs> uh, she's one of Soundwave's tapes. Yeah. <laughs> finally. Give, give me that Transformers movie where uh, Soundwave is played by Glenn Close and the tapes are played by Susan Sarandon, Meryl Streep, and Joan Allen. Was was uh, he a bad guy? The the tape or like the boombox yeah. transformer? I can't yep. recall. Soundwave's yeah. a Decepticon. Yeah. Okay, how about the big like blue and yellow like kind of Voltron type thing that was all construction equipment? The, it was like a crane and a dump truck that combined into one yeah, that's big fucking thing. The Constructicons, which uh, come together to create Devastator, is uh, also a Decepticon. Oh, okay. Was there a uh, was there a, a good version of that thing, or did they not get that? Like, uh, like we all come together like Voltron mm-hmm. kind of thing. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I that sure only was. remember the one that was. What, was it blue and yellow? Does that sound right in your head? Uh, that I'm not sure about. I mostly okay. know who Devastator from uh, the movies. The the uh, oh no, sh- I never bother with those movies. Like, and he shows up in the worst one, which is the second one of the of the Michael Bay movies. I'll stand by Transformers one and three as being pretty decent. Um, 
even though like I I haven't watched him since we all learned about Shia LaBeouf over the weekend. So we'll see. If, oh, what happened? Oh boy, I don't. <laughs> maybe just do we not have time? Maybe just to Google unpack? what Shia LaBeouf and then FKA Twigs got up to. Shia LaBeouf turns Ooh. out might be a real awful person. This is this is like hot news. Oh like yeah, just recently, just over the weekend. Oh, uh, man. He, I guess I... he dated FKA Twigs for a while, and now she is... What the fuck is FAK <laughs> Twigs? That's a person? <laughs> yes, it's a person. F-A-K Twigs. F- Am I getting no, that right? F-K-A Twigs. I feel like I'm explaining this to somebody 20 years older than me. She's a, yeah. she's a, a singer. A, a, like, like a pop musician. People like you know, people know who she is. Like yeah, in America, no kidding, <laughs> huh? Well, I learned something today. Yeah, there you go. And now, now you can go forth with that knowledge to Google her name <laughs> alongside Shia LaBeouf's, and then read some Ooh. real fucking awful shit. So interesting. Enjoy that. Okay. Put that. Well, I, put that into the rest of your day. <laughs> I woke up at 1 p.m., so I got a lot of day left, which you, is good. You got time. You can plenty of time to read up about Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, read up on Shia LaBeouf and familiarize yourself with the Glenn Close catalog. <laughs> Fry up some lamb, lamb chops. Uh, I got a full night. Yeah, have yourself a cereal <laughs> shake. Yeah. <laughs> Really building life for myself in this basement. <laughs> I don't need people. I just need lamb meat and crushed cereal in the internet. <laughs> you, can, you can keep your vaccine. I've got stuff going on. Okay. I don't need. Uh, I don't need to go to bars and coffee shops. They can't track somebody that doesn't move. <laughs> I don't show up on radar. <laughs> go. Go ahead, and chip me. It ain't ever gonna beep ever. Yeah. I think his chip is broken. No, he's broken. <laughs> <laughs> your tracer chip functions the way your heart does, like yeah. way too slowly. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. Well, I got oh, a full night enemy. We gonna put a bow on this pig? We done? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. Uh, ne- your homework for next week: uh, season uh, season seven of The Simpsons. That's hard for me to say. We're um, We're rocking episodes nine through thirteen Ooh, next week. Bet they'll be good. Yeah, solid. 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. In the meantime, you can find us uh, on Twitter at BarleyBasketUSA. You can email us, BarleyBasketUSA at gmail.com. And hot and fresh off of the presses, uh, we are now on Facebook and Instagram. So you can go like those as well if you want to see, you know, what we got going on. We'll be putting up... I don't want to say content, but we'll be throwing some shit up there every so often, yeah. and it's good. And it's a good place to just uh, like chit chat if you want to chit chat about the uh, about the show. Let us know what's what's what sick thoughts, what dark thoughts do you have in your head? If you're not comfortable putting it on the board, just DM us, DM the page. We'll let you know if you should go talk to somebody, or if it's <laughs> totally cool, just keep thinking those thoughts and let them grow. Yeah, bring it. It's on. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and email. We now have so many lanes for you to come into. Like, come on. Enter come us. Come on in. Let us Share know. It. Share it with your friends on the mm-hmm. Facebooks. I think that would be cool. Yeah. Show I think your that family would be what you do when you lie in your bedroom shit. and eating snacks in the dark. Tell, I'm not alone. <laughs> I got these two tight bros that sometimes talk about the Simpsons, but usually about their sadness. <laughs> Share the page on your page. Maybe your aunt wants to know about the she Simpsons and cool. us. She oh, knows for we're cool sure. dudes. Aunts we are, love us. We are number one with aunts. We are yep. the number one Simpsons Joan Allen podcast among aunts. You you really parse the data. There's it's hard to argue we're not the premier aunt podcast. Mm-hmm. Prove me wrong. Prove yeah. me wrong. Do I your love research. To see it. Love to see it. <laughs> All right, 9 through 13 for next week. Sound good, Nathan? I'm up for it. 
Enjoy your lamb chops and your cereal shakes. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, 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 I'll give you updates. <laughs> Perfect. See you, <ya>, everybody. <laughs> Bye.